Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Arlington Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, October 6, 2014. It's a little past 7.15 p.m. and I will call this meeting to order. Um, I would like to remind everyone that we are being filmed by ACMI, so please uh, smile widely when on camera. Um, we will get right into it. Um, Chief Ryan from the Arlington Police Department. To Good evening, Mr. Chairman, honorable members of the board. Thank you for having me tonight. I'll be brief. Um, in his annual report to the Board of Selectmen in 1894, then Chief Alonzo Harriman outlined what he felt was the mission of the Arlington Police Department. And I think it's relevant today. I'll share it with you. Chief Harriman stated, the police officer should be civil and courteous at all times and so conduct himself so as to ensure mor the moral support of the community. No other department of municipal government is so much expected, nor is there any that so much needs the encouragement and support of the community. And I think uh, Chief Harriman, uh, I'm sorry, Ch yeah, Chief Harriman was a wise man because those words stand true today. And to that end, uh, the Arlington Police Department um, has sought, and um, I'm happy and proud to report tonight, received full accreditation from the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission for the first time in the history of the Arlington Police Department. And part of the accreditation process is um, uh, inviting scrutiny, openness and transparency from uh, subject matter ec experts, and a willingness to, um, to uh, undergo some uh, constructive criticism. And if I may, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have our police accreditation team. Could I ask them to come forward? Please do. Them? Yes, please. of course. Could you guys come forward, please? As with uh, any major accomplishment, um, you can't do it alone, and the reality is, is um, I did very little of the work. The team behind me here, I had the vision, they rolled up their sleeves and they got it done. I'm here with uh, Captain Richard Flynn in the Blue Blazer, Inspector Rebecca Gallagher, who is now a family services officer, but she started out uh, uh, in the police planning position and really did uh, yeoman's work at getting us up, up to speed. She was relieved by Officer uh, Vitaly Volkov, who finished the process as our police planner, and um, uh, Joe Kniff, who's our uh, college intern, who really, uh, I think, was uh, being in college and having all the skills that college kids have, <laughs> was absolutely instrumental. He, he's a graduate of Mass Maritime Academy, and he's now going for a second degree at Mass Maritime. He continues to work, work for us as, um, as uh, a student intern. Um, what is accreditation? You know, accreditation is, you know, we had to comply with over 325 national uh, law enforcement standards as promulgated by the National Commission for Law Enforcement on Accreditation. Now, uh, you know, we could, we could write policy and stick it on a shelf, but you're not going to get accredited if you write policy and stick it on a shelf. The, the subject matter experts and the, uh, the assessors came out last spring and spent a week at the Arlington Police Department observing our activities, looking at our policies and procedures, and essentially uh, they wrote a report card to the Accreditation Commission, and I'm happy to tell you that your police department got an A+. And on October 2nd, we were accredited. Uh, all, all elements of the police department's operations uh, were scrutinized by these experts in the week-long um, uh, visit by them, and um, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the manager and all of the town side and school uh, department, we had a lean on the comptroller's office and the manager's office and the legal department and many departments to achieve these standards. And it was a real team effort uh, town wide. And, um, and lastly, and probably most importantly, um, you know, this isn't mandated. This is something that, that um, our team welcomed, the entire police department sworn and non-sworn, clerks, police officers, right up to the chief. And uh, I'm very proud uh, that uh, every member of our department willingly accepted the scrutiny. Um, we accepted the uh, constructive criticism, made repairs where they need to be uh, repaired, and we went out to Boston College uh, uh, Retreat Center in Dover, Massachusetts, the Connor Center, on last Thursday where the commission officially uh, accredited the police department. Um, the work has only just begun. 
because we have to remain in compliance with everything that we put in place so that we remain accredited. And in three years from now, uh, the assessors will revisit us and, and look, at, look at our last three years' work. So we're happy to answer any questions, uh, and I remain honored to be your chief of police. Thank you, Chief. I will uh, open up for the board. Ms. Bond. First, I want to say thank you, Chief. I know you're spreading a lot of the credit where it is due, um, but I do appreciate, once again, Arlington being in the forefront on endeavors like this. And thank you to Captain Flynn and Inspector Gallagher and Officer Volkoff and Mr. Kniff. I hope we see you some more. Um, very impressed with your curriculum vitae resume so far. Um, am I correct the way I'm viewing this is um, this is the police department sworn and non-sworn um, employees effort so that when we're faced, especially with the matters that the police have to handle, sometimes you get very trying, taxing sort of um, areas that maybe haven't been encountered before but are highly sensitive. Is the point of this um, accreditation when they come out, do they look at not only like you say, you know what the policies are, they're over there in the corner, but that the Arlington Police Department, all of its staff is better equipped so if they're faced with some sort of crisis, some sort of community event, people don't have to go running to books. Um, they already have kind of gone through that scenario. They're better prepared. I mean, I'm just trying to get my, hand, my head around what Yes, uh, it, it, um, there's a whole operational piece to it and uh, clearly uh, we have to have guidelines in place. We have to train to those guidelines and, um, and uh, officers are, uh, we have everything electronic now, uh, Ms. Mahan, so um, you know, years ago, the officers used to have to carry around a big binder. Uh, Rebecca used to issue all these binders. Now everything's electronic right out in the field. So the officers can do a keyword search. If they have a question about a policy, do a keyword search. The policy pop up. They can review it quickly. Supervisors can review it. So you're, you're entirely correct. It, 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 it puts us, uh, it postures us to be able to more effectively manage crisis in the community um, in compliance with national standards. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, that uh, minimizes our risk to civil liability and, um, and risk to the individual officers to civil liability as well. Well, I, I want to say I'm not surprised that you all received such a high rating um, and got the accreditation. And I just think of my world as a court reporter. I've seen various police agencies and entities, and sometimes where there are missteps and they fall down is because they haven't gone through a process, whether they're going for accreditation or not. Um, and when they're hit with a crisis, dealing with some of the stuff down at Bridgewater um, right now, um, I know that the Arlington Police Force, all the employees are certainly well trained um, and you wouldn't have gotten the accreditation if that hadn't been the case. So once again, really proud of everybody and all the unforeseen faces behind you that aren't behind you that helped also get this accreditation. Thanks again, Chief. Thank you, Mrs. Mon. And I would point out we're one of 45 municipal departments in the Commonwealth out of 351 cities and towns that have achieved this, and, and only one of our abutters has achieved accreditation, Winchester. Um, Mr. Carroll. Uh, thank you very much. I just want to say, um, you know, your credit to the town, you and everybody else in the department. You know, I always point to your letterhead, proactive and proud, and uh, you always uh, live up to that, that, um, that, that motto. Um, I think we all know, you know, a lot of the, the big, highly publicized challenges that the police department has faced over the past year or so um, and you know so much more that you do that you know most of us never see on a day-to-day -day basis um, we were talking just you know just before we came in here that you know there have been some well publicized incidents elsewhere in the country where you know there isn't this level of, of trust between the police department uh, and the community and I think going through this rigor and um, and you know, continuing to, to, to build upon that, that trust and be a, a truly community-oriented police department, uh, it serves us all well, and it's, again, it's a real credit to you. And so thank you very much for Thank you, Mr. Carroll. You, you know, we're only as good as the trust the community places in us, and we recognize that. Uh, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I'll echo the congratulations, and I will also say I am also <coughs> proud of the work that you've all done. It's excellent. And I, the thing that I wanted to call out in particular to me is I think about the day-to-day -day firefighting you guys do, so to speak, which of course isn't firefighting, but you know, the <laughs> but uh, you you deal. I mean, from uh, from homicides to traffic stops to microbursts to whatever, you guys are there on the front line. And then to be able to at the same time keep the big picture and keep working on something like this that is not the day-to-day -day and being able to balance that aspect of it, I think uh, that's really impressive. And I thank you very much. Thank you, and as I said, it's a team effort.
Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And um, I completely echo everything my colleagues have said. And, um, it's pretty clear that our whole community is better off because of the work that you all did um, to attain this accreditation. And um, you've made Arlington an even better place to live. And I can't thank you enough for that. So thank you very much. Thank you to you all. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Children in the back of the room. This so <laughs> so Thank you for coming. I saw a blonde head sticking up over the other. <laughs> Moving on, we have a presentation of the open checkbook. Um, Deputy Town Manager Flanagan and Town Comptroller Ruth Lewis. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Chairman and members of the board. Uh, while the projector warms up, uh, by way of a background uh, story. Uh, the way Arlington came involved with Open Checkbook has been on our radar uh, for quite some time, but back in April we applied among uh, several other communities for a Community Innovation Challenge Grant, which is funded by the uh, a and Administration of Finance. Uh, we were successful in obtaining that grant, and uh, over the course of the summer, myself and Ruth um, spent a great deal of time working with Munis and Tyler Katz to uh, try and integrate uh, our financial data as we see it in a format that would be easy to understand and useful to the public. So what I'd like to do is uh, just walk you through um, the five major, uh, five major icons um, uh, on the home page here. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free uh, to stop me. So the first icon you'll see is category. So what Ruth and I did is uh, we went through Munis, every, every single line item uh, in Munis, and classified it uh, with the title. We looked at what other communities were doing and what would make uh, the most sense in how we refer to things in Arlington. So you'll see capital outlay, debt service, maintenance, other expenses, personnel services, purchase of services, supplies and materials, and utilities. So just uh, to show you how deep um, this is able to go, I'm going to click on purchase of services. So you'll see another uh, level um, of titles that try to classify what expenses were. So, um, I'll uh, click on contracted uh, transportation. And again, you'll see yet another level broken down by vendors. Eight plus transportation, A and A metro transportation. And I think if you click on that. No problem. So you can actually go down to the actual trans uh, transaction. So in this case, 522.14, contract to transportation, department school, uh, the fund in which it was paid from, uh, school general fund, uh, and then vendor payments, the actual payment of $345. So you can drill down, um, and all of these categories are subcategories uh, under purchase of service, and there's quite a few of them, as you can see. Um, so I'm going to go back to the home page and hit uh, department. So what we tried to do here is cluster our uh, departments um, in a format that's consistent with how the Department of Revenue um, clusters departments. So you'll see community safety. Uh, that's pretty unique to Arlington. It re it's referred to as public safety at the state level, culture and rec, debt service, general government. So I'm just going to um, click on general government. And you'll see all the departments that you would see in either our budget book or our uh, financial plan uh, that we classify as general government. So uh, because I got Ruth here, we'll click on Comptroller. <laughs> and you'll see a few things. So you'll see general funds. So the entire, uh, all expenditures on the Comptroller Department came uh, through the general fund. Off to the right, it's hard to see, I know, in the projection. Mm. But what her greatest, uh, are the Comptroller's greatest uh, expenditures were vendors. In this case, it's Verizon, which makes sense as they manage um, uh, the town cell uh, telephone account. So if you click on employee earnings, you'll see uh, every um, employee in the department uh, by title and total earnings. Uh, in a few minutes, I'll take you to the payroll function um, that provides a lot more detail um, in terms of employee earnings. So again, back to the um, home page, and I'll click on fund. And I think this is um, 
one area of uh, this product that is uh, particularly helpful. We have a lot of funds um, in Arlington. So you'll see general funds, special revenue funds, enterprise funds, capital projects, OPEB trust fund, really all of the funds um, that we have here in Arlington. So if you click on uh, special revenue funds, we have it broken down yet again. So miscellaneous um, special revenue, then you'll see school grants, we pull them out and uh, specify them, uh, school revolving funds, town grant funds, and then uh, town revolving funds as we authorize them at uh, town meeting every year. Uh, for the purposes of uh, demonstration, I'll hit town hall rental. <coughs> You'll see all the vendors that were charged um, to town hall rental. And again, um, let's say we go to Atlas Sales and Rentals. You go right down uh, to the transaction. Uh, next is government ar area. And this is more for uh, uh, graphical representation of um, town expenses. If you, let's say we go to non-appropriated, which is our non-department. you'll see a, a graphical representation of how this is uh, broken down. So again, if you go to, let's say, group health insurance, you're going to see um, the towns, uh, generally their payments to the GIC. So uh, lastly, vendor. So uh, this is also a pretty powerful function. You can search every vendor uh, that the town is contracted with um, in a given year. So if you look up, I don't know if you can see it, I'm looking at 2014. You can click on 2015 and see year to date, or go back to 13 or 12. Um, for the purposes of this, I'm going to stick with 14. Um, again, if you scroll over, you'll see all of our top vendors. None should be uh, too big of a surprise. Uh, MWRA, uh, those are our assessments uh, that are charged to water and sewer. Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which is, uh, again, the GIC. Uh, the Arlington Retirement System, Minute Man Voke Assessment, JRM, our trash, um, our trash hauler. And again, if you click on... Uh, let's say, A to Z foods. You'll see the different accounts they were charged to. Um, in this case, I think they're all uh, school department, field trips, food service, miscellaneous receipts, other classified. Again, click on it. Um, and you have, here's an area where we have several transactions, the date of the transaction, where it was charged, how we've categorized it, um, and then uh, what fund it was charged to. So the last uh, area I want to show you is payroll. So here you'll find um, an in-depth accounting of every employee in the town of Arlington, both town and school side, uh, of their earnings. And what it is broken down on the top by regular pay, overtime, detail, stipend. These are all types of pay you'll see under each employee. Um, we do not uh, include the names of employees, but we do include the titles of uh, employees. So um, it's basically uh, alphabetized based on uh, where their like, group code is in Munis. So administration is schools, Arlington after day school, school care, and so on. Um, because of all the different types of pay, I'm going to uh, search for a uh, firefighter because I think that best um, shows you the capabilities of, uh, of the system. So. Here you go, you have uh, firefighter, fire services is their department. You have 2015 year the date earnings, and I can say that this gets updated once a week. Um, 2014 earnings, uh, 2013 earnings, and then base rate. So I'm gonna click on uh, firefighter, and you'll see uh, every component of that person's pay. Detail, differential, education incentive, EMT pay, holiday pay, other overtime regular pay stipend and then total, uh, total earnings. Um, so that's the last thing uh, I'm going to go over tonight. Uh, we are very hopeful that this is going to be a good complement to Arlington Visual Budget, which really provides a, a much broader overview. But this provides uh, the resident with an option or an opportunity to go a little bit deeper. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, otherwise, uh, we're excited to get this going. And hopefully, uh, we'll be able to launch in the next couple of weeks. Thank you, Andrew. Um, Joe. Thank you very much. Very excited about this. I, I think we're on the right tra trajectory, starting with the visual budget and now moving to this. You know, in my former life, 
on the school committee, you know, every, you know, week, four of us would have to go and sign the warrant for, for vendor payments and would go through that. I'd spend a lot of time looking at that, and there's a lot of information we gleaned from that. And I remember thinking at the time that this would be very valuable information to have up online, but with so many other balls in the air, it never quite happened. And it looks like you've, you've now achieved that here with the roll-ups as well, which, which is just extraordinary. Um, I just wanted to know, um, I didn't see, th this tool is strictly for expenditures going out the door though, right? Correct. You cannot take a budget to actuals view using this tool or? Um, Not yet as far as I know, Ruth, I don't. I think they're working on the budget to have budget to actual so you can have comparisons and also they look, they're looking at revenues too, so you have an idea of what revenues. That the yeah. So, for instance, right now under FY14, uh, you won't see the revenue that was going into the override stabilization fund. Yeah. You'd only see, you know, in future years what an expenditure from would be. Yeah, yeah. I, I only ask because I can imagine somebody going into the tool and if they missed the note that, you know, <laughs> 2015 is just year to date expenditures, you know, it'll look no. unnaturally low. Uh, you know, a lot of those line items will look unnaturally low. Um, when they look at it, but I, I think the tool is, is uh, great. I, I started poking around a little bit on the, the link that you gave the, uh, the, the board, and uh, I'm looking forward to drilling into it a lot more. Great. Thank you. Ms. Mahan. Um, I'm going to leave a lot of the technical kudos to um, Mr. Kiro, who's already spoken to Mr. Dunn, because I was watching their facial reactions and judging <laughs> how great this system was by how many times I saw twinkles and smiles. So it looks like you, this is a really good thing. Um, my, my question was sort of what you touched on at the end, where um, you listed the position versus the employee, which I really stand by that. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering, <clears throat> and maybe I was reading it wrong, but I thought when you clicked, and I just want to find out if this is the case, if we can treat that the same way also, unless the law says no. But I think when you clicked on, and I don't want you to do it right now, contributory retirement or OPEB or something like that, I saw individual names and the amounts. We can certainly look into that um, a little bit more closely. We've actually spent a great deal of time trying to identify sensitive Right. Data and but I'm just it. thinking on, on things like that. If it's doable, we'll certainly take a look. Because I'd mean, like to definitely be transparent and give people information, but also res respect the fact that we do have town employees and, you know, uh, especially around their retirement. Um, but, but if you could look into that, I'm not asking you, whatever that screen was, it was OPEB, contributory retirement, something like that. If you can go back and look at it, if it's not a Herculean <laughs> task, that it can also be identified a different way, you know, 29 year. DPW employee, or maybe even not 29 year, I don't know. Um, or maybe there's some rules, mass state law, retirement law that you have to put. I just know that some people, I know my husband would be concerned if he could look up his portfolio and, and see it to that um, degree in depth. But he is a private employee, not a, a municipal, so I understand the onus on that. So if it's doable and if it's appropriate. We'll I certainly just, take a look at it. Okay, if that's okay. Lisa okay. Evans, thank you. Um, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I think it's great. I was playing with it last night at home, and uh, I think the compromise that you've made on the payroll data makes a lot of sense, so I, I think you, you, you got that right, uh, which I'm really happy with. This is a huge step forward. I think, like when I, when Will Brownsberger made it happen for the state, for the state's funding, I mean, that was like pulling teeth, and here we are doing it without any teeth pulled. So I'm really, I'm really uh, thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Um, I had one question. I was also going through it um, earlier. And for, I think, particularly in salaries, for, you know, when you click on an office, you know, it would have one, one job, and they would have, you know, three different rows. Can you uh, talk to why that might be? Like, under their salaries, they would have... Sure. So, um, one of the things we identified uh, sort of last minute um, today was there's two ways to get to salary detail. One is to go um, into other reports, payroll, and the other is to click on the department and see earnings. And what they were doing was, let's say an employee had a regular pay, a stipend, and longevity mm -hmm. that lists regular pay on a totally separate line, um, longevity, and then stipend or whatever uh, the particular pay was. So if an employee had five, let's say you were a, a captain in one of our departments, mm -hmm. you may see 35 lines of captains because they each had several different components of mm -hmm. pay. Um, 
I think this afternoon, uh, looking at the Comptroller's Office, I know as, as of this afternoon, we're able to consolidate those all into one line. Okay. So now you have two options. You have total salary if you go um, through the department function, mm -hmm. or you know, uh, every component of the pay, including the total, if you go through the payroll function. So I think that's something uh, we resolved. Oh, great. Um, and one other question. With, um, do you see this um, adding you know, extra work on to town employees? Um, I'll let uh, Ruth speak to this a little bit too because uh, we were certainly, uh, it was certainly in a partnership to get this to where it is today. Um, but one of the best components of, the, uh, of this whole operation is that it links directly to the units. It updates uh, on a weekly basis without any uh, employee interaction with it. Okay. So um, uh -huh. I would say uh, other than you know, chasing down some of these initial um, snags and uh, how we're presenting the data, it'll be uh, almost effortless. I'm happy to hear that. Thank you very much. Um, any further questions? Is there anyone here from the public to speak on this? Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've come to this microphone in a long time. Uh, I just wanted to, to thank Andrew and Ruth for all the work they did on this and really thank the board for its leadership in regards to transparency. It, it, it's a long history of transparency here in Arlington, starting with very detailed budget documents a couple of years back, starting with that four-page public annual financial report moving forward to last year with the Arlington Visual Budget, and now this real high level of detail uh, in terms of expenses. And I know we hear at town meeting every year, what are the actuals? We'd like to see actuals. And now this is an opportunity for town meeting members and other residents to see those actuals. So still a little bit of a work in progress. I think some of the points the board members made we'll take a look at before we launch. Uh, we'll be showing it to the school committee later this month uh, at a school committee meeting, and then we'll officially roll it out to the public. So it won't be on the website tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, but before the end of October, we anticipate it being ready, being launched, and having it sort of be that next step in, uh, in transparency in Arlington. Thank you very so, much, thank Adam. You. Any further discussion? Seeing none, thank you very much for all your work on thank this. You. Thank you. Moving on, uh, public hearings, National Grid Petition, Hilton Street, Mr. Regan. Thank you. Oh, yep. Or not Mr. Regan. Yes, hello, Ms. Kelleher. Hi, my name is Barbara Kelleher. I'm the acting um, permits rep for National Grid. Thank you. Um, questions from the board? Just if she wants to briefly state yeah, what do you want to, yeah, yeah, do you want to talk petition? about it? Sure. Um, the National Grid, grid here, hereby respectfully request your consent to install and maintain approximately 70 feet, more or less, of four inch gas main in Hilton Street in Arlington from the existing four inch main at house number 36 through 38 westerly to house 32 and 34 for a new gas service. Mr. Dunn. Move approval subject to all conditions. I look forward to hearing any about ours. Yes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is anyone here to discuss this agenda item? Seeing none, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? For Thank nothing you. vote. And moving on, please stay well, right where you are to on, uh, Old Ham Road. Uh, the National Grid hereby respectfully requests your consent to the locate um, to install and maintain approximately <clears throat> 100 feet, more or less, of six-inch gas main in Old Ham Road, in Arlington, from the existing six-inch gas main at House Number um, 38 Easterly to House Number 18 Country Club Drive for a new gas service. Questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Move approval, subject to conditions. Thank second. you. We have a motion and a second. Are, is anyone here in the audience to discuss this agenda item? Please come forward. Good evening. Hi, I'm Deanne DuPont, 32 Oldham Road. Hello. And I got one of the, the letters. So I just have a couple of questions. And um, <coughs> what are any negatives? And what about the impact on the street and accessibility to our homes? And how will the street be? Will it be returned to the order that it is? And if anyone has objected to these items before, other, you know, what are some of the objections? Because I personally don't know what I should be asking about except what I've just asked. Thank you. A uh, hundred feet may look 
long, it's really not. It's, it really doesn't have, a, it won't have that much impact. I can't speak for the construction department, but it, it seems to me that it wouldn't have too much impact on the, um, the abutters. And the abutters would also, they will always take into account someone who has to get into their driveway. They will put a steel plate over coming and going into someone's home. They would never block anybody's way to get into their driveway. So what about when they're digging? Because I, I if, if possible, you, if you could uh, put the questions into the microphone, please. Right. Yeah. What about while they're digging? Because um, there's a project that I work on, and, and we're constantly going in and out of my out. driveway. So they'll they'll always try to accommodate okay. the abutters. That is, it, that's as far as I know, and I'm pretty sure of that. So. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. Uh, so I can only speak from my experience of having my street. Uh, it was as much, mine was, uh, they replaced the entire gas line up uh, <coughs> Alpine Street because it was too old. And uh, it is definitely something that when it happens, there is in some inconvenience to the people who live on the street because, uh, but you also, but there's a police detail there and they're generally reasonably good about notifying you about it ha about when it's going to happen and how long it's going to happen and stuff like that. But uh, I mean, it is true that there's an inconvenience here that happens as a result. But it, in general, we see we approve them because the you know the the other resident in town who's getting the benefit you know it's there's, there's a give and a take there. Okay. Mm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Hi, good evening. Anthony Sharaf at 38 Oldham. So I'll be right. In, I'll be right in front of where you're doing okay. the, the work. And all I want, yeah. all I would like to know is what is the degree of disruption that will be there from, uh, you know, morning till approximately what time for access to the driveway and anything like that. That's actually up to the public works department in the town. Okay. The the amount, the times of the beginning and end of the of the job is up to the public works. So, when, if we are granted, if we're lucky enough to be granted the um, the um, permit it would be up to our construction um, department and the uh, public works. Okay, so, and, and my other... And the impact, it will, okay. they'll try to keep it, the <laughs> okay. impact as, as My, my as other possible. concern with, is with uh, restoring the road to its condition. Uh, that's also up to the, um, that's, they have to uh, um, agree to the terms that, okay. um, that they... I, I'd like to request, if, it's a, if this is the right forum for it, uh, for the, um, the uh, hot top to be sealed afterwards, because with winter coming, uh, frost heaves and everything, that will be, um, that will be a problem. If it, if it isn't sealed. Yes, Mr. Dunn. Would it be appropriate for the town manager to weigh in? Um, if he so yeah, desires. Yeah, yeah, no, I, it's fine. Uh, I, I would have to check on what hours in this particular road uh, that engineering will be signing off on. In regards to the seal, um, without the engineer being here, what I would suspect he would say is we absolutely will require an infrared seal, but we might allow for some settling to happen okay. over the winter before requiring that seal. So there could be, a, a, a less than sealed patch, uh, but come springtime, we would require National Grid to come back out and okay. infrared seal it. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Yep. Is anyone else here to speak on this agenda item? Seeing none, <coughs> we have a motion in a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you, good night. Thank you, good night. <clears throat> Moving on, Citizens Open Forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Is anyone here for Citizens Open Forum? Yes, please come forward. Hi, my name is Amy Haberland. I actually um, submitted some information beforehand, so I hope that everybody got it. Um, on July 3rd, a tree branch from a town tree fell on my car, causing several thousand dollars worth of damage. Um, this was a holiday weekend, so everything was closed. It, as a matter of fact, it was not a holiday, though, for my family. My husband works in a grocery store. He had to be at work at 4 a.m. on July 4th. Um, I had, we were really desperate. It was very scary. I had no car. I had no way of getting a car. I had no way of contacting his office. Um, 
uh, finally on Saturday when I uh, tried to contact, I didn't know how to contact the town and find out what to do about it, I reached out to my friend um, Sally Nash, who's on the tree committee, and she uh, emailed Mr. Rademacher for me, who then sent someone down from the town who gave me a very hard time, who first accused me of um, lying about the event. Uh, when I told him I had 10 witnesses to the event, he finally relented and said that the event actually had happened. Uh, then he told me he was going to prune my trees and they were going to be permanently ugly and horrible. And I came to the town, I talked to Mr. Flanagan who started to help me with that. And um, eventually I um, talked to the town manager who told me I had to uh, request a tree hearing, which I did. I went through the town again, I requested a tree hearing. They then told me I didn't need to request a tree hearing, that I just had to request a pruning. This was over a time period of a long, long time. Anyways, uh, finally they pruned my trees, they came by and they cut <coughs> one, one branch off of my tree and two branches off of the tree next to me. It took about 15 minutes. That, I thought that was it, it was fine, I was done with it. There were tree, you know, I just was hoping the tree would not fall again on my car. And uh, this morning, all of a sudden I hear trucks outside my house and they are taking every branch off a completely different tree in front of my house. Uh, my neighbor tried to stop them. My neighbor who has a two day old baby, he couldn't stop them. I finally went out there to stop them and I was greeted by uh, a very angry DPW worker um, and I finally um, got them to stop. They showed me the order for it. It was the same order from way back when so I have no idea why it had come up again and he explained to me what the order meant. Um, I then contacted, I called the town um, to try to speak to some people. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Flanagan called me back, he was very nice, he, we went over everything, uh, it was great, and then... Uh, I'm sorry, we are, we are approaching okay. three minutes, okay. so um, yeah. if, uh, you know, if you want to make a closing statement, please feel free. Yeah, I just want to say that this has been, you know, a very stress, I just don't understand how this is supposed to be easy. I mean, I just, it just seems like it's supposed to be a really easy thing to get a tree fixed and pruned, and it's been a three month thing now. Mm -hmm. And all I get is sort of like really angry, hostile responses anytime I call the town. Well, thank you uh, very much for coming for us tonight. Um, moving on, I saw another hand for Citizens Open Forum. Please come forward. Good evening, thank you for hearing me. I'm uh, Vera Barter, I represent Houghton Property Management in Boston. We're a property management company for 12 Pond Lane Condominium. We've been doing this for about 25 years for this building. Love the building and the community. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Chairman, is this, am I correct in understanding that this is under correspondence received? Or do we want to, so we could? It, it, there is, it is under correspondence received. <laughs> we we, could, you we certainly it? could hear her now or, or under correspondence. Yeah. So if I think that the issue is, is if you do want to proceed now, you will only have three minutes. If you want to wait until correspondence mm -hmm. received, um, you can well, have a little I can bit more have time. my three minutes and then the many, many residents from Pond Lane can choose to have their time during correspondence okay. if that's okay. Yeah. Um, so we've, we've, uh, have, we are neighbors with the uh, American Legion Post who's directly above our property uh, of this building. And uh, because we are below grade, we have for years and years uh, suffered through uh, flooding and erosion problems, which we've asked them to, um, to please uh, mitigate the drainage coming off of the building. Um, in addition to the problem with this uh, flooding, which about a month or two months ago, we suffered tens of thousands of dollars worth of sand and drainage, uh, mud, mud piles into the building itself, into the lobby of the building and so on from um, erosion, lack of maintenance of their rear of their property, walls that are broken down, uh, sand, sand and mud that's basically gushing down the driveway, gutters which have 
come off of their building with no downspouts and no place for the water to go except down the driveway onto this property. We are right now looking at about $22,000 worth of damage to the interior of the building. We've sent them letters, we've sent requests, um, and we're very, very frustrated with their lack of response and lack of community. Our secondary issue, and probably one as important to the residents, is the amount of noise, drinking, the smoking that happens outside the building, of course, happens in the back of the property, which is where all of the balconies of, of this building are. Uh, 1, 2, 2.30 in the morning. Um, they do have access through our parking lot and driveway out so that they don't have to turn back around to Mass Ave. They can cut through our property, which they do, but they do it at such excessive speeds. Um, and also, I'm not as worried about safety of residents at 2 in the morning as I am of the safety of the person driving in a very narrow driveway with stone walls. We've had a car come uh, through a, um, a fence. Um, fortunately, the fence stopped them from cascading down. The, my point to the selectmen is that we would really like you to seriously um, take whatever action you, you reasonably can to bring these people to some accountability. I mean, they are serving alcohol. They have some responsibility to the community. No one has a problem with an American Legion Club. We understand it. We understand the aspect, the social, and, and all of that. But there's got to be something that greater police presence. We've asked them to put a stop sign or something that would slow these people down when they're cutting through our property. They have taken absolutely no action whatsoever on any of these issues. If, if you could just make a closing statement, yes. we're out of time. So we are asking the selectmen to please do whatever you can within the realm of your responsibility to uh, bring them um, to some accountability. Thank you very much. Moving on. Yes, please, Mr. Fiore. Peter Fiore, 58 Mott Street, Precinct 2. I just, I come up with a concern, um, what I think is a big picture concern. In the neighborhood, we've had uh, six homes torn down in the past three years, three in just this past year. Uh, three of them are on, four of them are on Dorothy Road, uh, two on Mott Street. The Dorothy Road homes are all single families. I, mean, I can understand that they're in an R2 that got rebuilt as two-unit condominiums. I've gotten a little bit concerned that Two two-family homes on Mott Street, rather than be converted to condominiums, have been torn down, foundations and all, and are being rebuilt as condominiums. Uh, if this is the trend for Arlington with the older housing stock, uh, then I think uh, we need to get ahead of the curve on policy issues. And uh, as for the practical issues, um, uh, heavy equipment comes and goes, uh, debris haulers come and go. There's no police detail. They're not required to hire police detail. Um, I have a shameful paper presentation, uh, shameful because of Mr. Flanagan's excellent open checkbook presentation. Uh, you know, debris haulers back in illegally the wrong way up a one-way street. No police detail hired to, to allow them to do that. There's not even somebody from the demolition company walking behind the truck, walking them up the street. These excavations have been open, no gate, no fence, no lock. Nothing to stop some kid from chasing his dog in there and having these side walls collapse on him. I'm not uh, faulting these companies. I'm not saying this is malicious. I, I think they just don't get it. I think there are safety issues that should be addressed that aren't. And going forward, again, if this is the trend now that these homes are going to, these two families are going to get torn down and rebuilt as opposed to renovated, um, then maybe they, they, these companies need to be required to hire police detail when this work is being done, when this heavy equipment and supplies are being delivered. Um, they ought to be expected to put up a fence with a chain, with a gate. Uh, so that's why I come here tonight. It's just to express the concern. I'm, I'm not asking anybody to go down and beat up these guys. Um, uh, I, I don't, they haven't been particularly bad, but, but again, just going forward, I, I think there are issues that, <coughs> that we need to address. I, I have copies here of uh, it's just building permits, a couple of photos, if I could hand them off to... If you just leave them with Fran, then we can... Have them all. Them uh, so, so that's really it. Um, if you could persuade the building inspector, 
Chief Ryan, the police, just to keep an eye on things, that's great. But again, I'm not, I'm not here to complain about the work that they're doing or fault them. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not really, really bad, but um, anyway, I've spoken too much. Thanks. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Is anyone else here to speak under citizen? Yes, please, come forward. Um, I'm April Rank, the executive director. I believe you're, you have an agenda item uh, Yes, it was uh, on the addendum. Yes. So, and, um, is that so we're going to speak at that when we come to it oh, on I'm the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought yeah. I was supposed to jump. No, thank you. Sorry. Is anyone else here to speak under Citizens Open Forum? Seeing none. Moving on. Yes. Uh, I'd like to, first I want to thank you for my three minutes, and I'd like to uh, thank Vera for presenting our uh, issue yes. uh, with the uh, American Legion. Um, I he I'd like to speak on the um, flooding issue. Uh, I don't know if you can help us with that, but uh, uh, he she had addressed the, uh, the drain pipes that were uh, not going into a drain, and I just want to inform you that he's got three uh, three drain pipes without a drain. And, and that water, what, it's only when we have flash flooding. I only have an issue when we have flash flooding. And when it rains, other than that, it's, it's not an issue. And I have a video of rain uh, water coming from his uh, drain pipe into our drain, if you want to see it. I don't know if this is appropriate. You know, th time. This probably is not the right no. form for okay. that. Uh, and I just. Uh, it's very disturbing when that this event occurs, flash flooding. Uh, so I, I would just uh, like for you to address to him, if you could, to to he to stop that water from coming into our drain, because just that would may that's all we need is, is to stop the flash flooding. Uh, they've built the berm, a wall. Where, where she showed you a picture of that was water coming through there. And if we have, we just want this, you know, for him to put a drain in or it, reroute his drain pipes so that water, when, when, only when there's a flash flooding, I just, I, it's only when that occurs. And so that's it for him. And it, it's just disturbing because the water backs up and it goes into our building and we've had, and it floods the hallway and has created, like Ferris said, lots of damage. So, and the building next to it, I think it's Mr. Priscillo's, we've requested that he attach his drain pipes. There's just two drain pipes that need to be hooked up. But th those three little things, if I, if they just fix that, I, that's all I want. And if, it, if they fix that, it may solve the whole problem. But we've sent, the lawyers sent letters, of absolutely no response. And it's like, it, uh, it doesn't seem that difficult to me. And we, we could even help him if he came to us and needed money. You know, maybe we could work the money out if he needed money to put in a drain. We're, we're not fighting. I'm, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to, but he's not addressing. He denies the problem. He denies the noise, the speed bumps, and, and the water. It, it's, he claims it's coming from Mass Ave, and there's no water coming from Mass Ave. There's two sewers that collect the water before Mass Ave, and it's, his, it's before the point that the water starts coming. Thank you. Um, if you could make a closing statement, your three yeah. minutes are expired. That's it. I just want to thank you. Thank you very for much. Your yes. attention. Yes. Thank you. And uh, just very briefly, just so I just want to make sure our remarks that, that you don't take them a different way. The, the way our agenda is crafted is, is basically three pieces. The agenda, which is people who have information, they've contacted the selectman's office, town manager's office, um, and now they have an agenda item. We looked into it, department heads have reported. Another part of the agenda is executive session, which we don't have tonight. And then a third part, once we get done with the agenda, is correspondence received. And what typically what happens with that is that's the first time that the selectmen are being contacted or communicated. And typically what we do, sometimes it's just an announcement saying, you know, Arlington High football team, five and zero. But sometimes it's a letter like yours. So basically this is the first step um, coming before the board where when we get to that, I don't want you to think that, gee, they didn't really seem to do much. Normally what we do is the chairman will, you know, look at each um, piece of correspondence and 
as he see, deems fit where it goes. So what I'm saying is this is just the beginning of the process because right. I, I just want you all to know that we're not, if our remarks seem brief or anything like that, it's just that this is our first notification. This, this is shooting the clock and to get it all started. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Is anyone else here for Citizens Open Forum? Seeing none, moving on. Traffic rules and orders um, for approval. Arlington Center Parking Management proposal. Mr. Chaplain, this is an exciting one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so before the board tonight is a proposal to move forward on the somewhat long worked on Arlington Center parking management uh, discussion, concept, study, uh, however we want to name it. So uh, for the benefit of the board, the benefit of the uh, folks here tonight, as well as those watching at home, uh, the millions, as uh, Selectman Greeley would say. Uh, I'm going to walk through the proposal, uh, r frankly, read it a little bit, uh, just so we make sure we get all the, the ideas out there. Um, again, as the board knows, this has been discussed for some time, uh, it <clears throat> probably um, decades in terms of concern, but most recently we started several years ago discussing the need for a study, the need for a solution to both issues in the lots as well as availability on the streets. Uh, that's what prompted a, <clears throat> a capital planning request uh, two cycles ago to fund a study which resulted in the hiring of Nelson Nygaard, a professional firm, to work with a working group of uh, town officials uh, and town committee members to, to do a study. That study was supplemented by work done by TAC in terms of traffic and parking counts. Uh, once the study was underway, uh, there were several uh, points for public input. Uh, there was a nice session in the auditorium, I know, where residents and business owners could come in and talk about some of the proposals that were on the table, uh, followed by a specific agenda, uh, excuse me, a specific meeting for business owners. Uh, and then um, the most recent uh, was in April when Nelson Nygaard, as well as members of the Planning and Community Development Office, came before the board to present their findings. The next step uh, is really to get the board to adopt uh, some portions of their recommendations so that we can start to move forward if it's the board's prerogative uh, in terms of implementing a parking management strategy in Arlington Center uh, that would create availability uh, through a pricing strategy. So the first thing uh, being proposed to the board tonight is really what I, I think is the important thing to remember for, for anybody watching this is the establishment of what the goals are in, uh, for parking in Arlington Center. So establishing parking goals. Uh, so. Uh, the first goal I'd like the board to establish is uh, voting to establish clear and consistent parking regulations throughout Arlington Center. Uh, second, adopting an availability goal of 15% on street and 10% off street for vacant parking spaces. And this goal will be tracked using uh, utilization reports that we would require in any technology that we buy to implement. And uh, third, really tied into the second goal would be pricing parking <coughs> to meet the availability goal using the principle of the most convenient and desirable parking being priced higher than the less desirable. Um, this is all really taken right from the recommendations of Nelson Nygaard. Uh, and again, it, it creates a principle for the board to work with and to adjust in the future, but still a principle adopted stating that availability is key. Uh, so as going forward, we can monitor something up against this goal. Second tonight, we're asking the board to create a governance committee that can really help the board work through these issues as we move forward. Uh, so you see in your proposal, we have proposed the establishment of a parking implementation and governance committee. Uh, and this would have representatives from a number of groups that I'll name in a moment uh, that would really help first with implementing this new management system that's being proposed tonight, um, as well as then monitoring and governing the system once it's in place and advising the board uh, when changes uh, might need to be made. And finally, uh, we'd hope they play an important role um, an important advisory role in what funds could be spent through uh, what's raised uh, through meters on a parking benefit district. I'll get a little bit uh, deeper into what a parking benefit district is later, but the general idea being money raised from this parking strategy to go back into the district to improve <coughs> infrastructure, to improve Arlington Center. Uh, so this implementation governance uh, committee that we're talking about, what's being proposed to the board tonight is uh, a nine voting member make up with one ex officio member. Uh, the first member being a designee of the board, second member being a designee of myself, the town manager, third being a member of TAC, the Transportation Advisory Committee, fourth being a representative of the Chamber of Commerce, fifth being a representative from Arlington Center Merchants Group, sixth being a representative of one of the uh, larger institutions located in Arlington Center, uh, such as Arlington, Cath uh, Arlington Catholic or St. Agnes, Seventh, the parking clerk. Eighth, the community safety traffic unit. 
and nine, a neighborhood resident. And finally, the ex officio member being a member of the Planning and Community Development Office to serve as a technical, um, technical expert to help the group. Moving on from there, uh, we, we're asking the board tonight to adopt a parking management fee structure. And there's a map uh, that the board has uh, before them, and uh, should, the, should this be adopted tonight, we'll make this map available online. The map's actually already been available online through the, uh, the larger parking study, but it's just a, a one page attached to the proposal tonight. And what we're talking about is creating uh, on-street parking on Mass Ave, uh, spots on Court Street, spots on Medford Street, uh, through Broadway Plaza and down one block on Broadway, uh, and the total universe being uh, basically from Mill Street down to uh, Mass and Franklin, creating on-street one hour, uh, one excuse me, on-street one dollar an hour parking for up to four hours from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in the two lots, uh, the Russell Common lot and the Water uh, Water Street lot, creating 50 cents an hour unlimited parking uh, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then on designated streets, you can see on the map, I won't read through all of them, uh, free four-hour parking from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, the key differences here are, as we know, there's currently no on-street paid parking. And <clears throat> in the lots, we have 50 cents an hour, but it is capped by three hours. So this would be creating uh, pricing on the streets, uh, on the very uh, convenient spaces uh, with access to business and maintaining the same price in the lots, but making it unlimited for long-term parkers, people who work in the center, people who want to spend more time in the center. Um, so that is the fee proposal, and that ties back in with the goal that I mentioned at the beginning of creating a higher price for the most convenient, desirable parking and a lower price for the less convenient, uh, less desirable. Not that it's undesirable, but it's just not as convenient as street parking. Uh, so if you get to park right out front, it's going to be a little more expensive than you park in the lot and walk to your destination. Uh, finally, uh, in terms of the, a funding plan, nothing specifically requested for the board to adopt tonight, but I think it's a key part to talk about how we're viewing all this and, and get the board's support on this, is to break the revenues down really into um, three different areas. And the three goals I've laid out are holding the general fund harmless, currently monies that are collected via violations, permits, and money that's put into the meters in the two municipal lots now goes into the general fund. So that basically helps support, uh, in, in a general way, it just helps support the whole town government. Uh, it, it just goes in through local receipts, which is the category of revenue we call it, and it supports the budget. So I, I'd like to recommend we hold that harmless. So we're recommending putting uh, violation revenue and permit revenue not from the two lots to hold the general fund harmless. Next, we want to make sure we can pay for the new meters we buy and also support what it's going to cost to operate them, enforce them, and really run the parking district. So monies from the on-street meter revenue, um, we are asking to put into a special revenue fund, which is enabled by statute, that is allowed to pay for meters and pay for the operation of meters. And then finally, we want to create a parking benefit district, as I mentioned earlier. And for that, we would use a general revolving fund, which is uh, something that's authorized every year for different, um, different issues at town meeting. And for that, we'd put off-street permit and meter revenue from the lots. And what we would want to do with that money, uh, very specifically, is have an annual amount approved in the revolving fund that we can reinvest in Arlington Center. Sidewalks, roadway improvements, lighting, decorations, other issues that we can talk about, uh, you know, with the representatives on this uh, implementation and governance committee that we've mentioned. But it shows, um, you know, both the benefit of managing the parking, managing the resource, creating availability, but also not just taking the revenue and, and just going to a town benefit, but directly impacting uh, the business owners and the residents of Arlington Center. So I, I think it creates sort of a win-win strategy of both management and sort of a returned benefit to the district. Um, Finally, there's uh, still a number of concerns that are very important to address tonight that aren't addressed in today's recommendations. Uh, the goal would be to have, <clears throat> before anything's implemented on the street, have this proposed implementation and governance <coughs> committee uh, spend the next several months making some final uh, decisions in terms of what to recommend to the board. Uh, these issues are the permits for off-street parking lots. We know we need to have permits. It makes sense to have permits. There's enough room for permits during the day. But we need to sit down with all the stakeholders, uh, especially um, 
the big users like Arlington Catholic High School, uh, Arlington Catholic High School, potentially American Alarm, figure out exactly what they need and make a final recommendation for how much a permit will cost and how many we'll have and exactly how we'll manage them. Next, taxi stands. We had quite a bit of discussion about taxi stands uh, during the first presentation. Um, the recommendations from the study were to move taxi stands off the premium uh, parking spots on Mass Ave and perhaps find a different location for them. Before I'm prepared to make any final recommendations to the board, I want to make sure that the parking committee can sit down with the taxi owners, make sure we fully understand their issues and how they utilize the taxi stands before we make a final recommendation. Third, ADA spaces. Uh, we need to make final recommendations for the appropriate number and location of these spaces. I think we, uh, my understanding is we have the appropriate number, but they might not necessarily today be in the right location. So we need to iron that out and make a final recommendation. <clears throat> Loading zones. This is an issue that a number of uh, Arlington Center merchants have raised, and I know it's very important to them. Uh, there's currently no loading zone, as I am aware, uh, in Arlington Center, but there are trucks that come and load, and they, and they block up either bus stops or ADA spaces or wh wherever they are and create <coughs> concern. Uh, so again, we want to sit with the stakeholders, figure out if we can get a handle on what times of day these trucks need, how much space they need, and see if there's a way we can manage that effectively. Uh, Bus stops, get the bus stop that's in front of the Regent Theater as well as the bus stop that queues on Broadway Plaza. Uh, we've made some progress uh, with the MBTA and a willingness to relocate the bus at Broadway Plaza further down in front of American Alarm that where it currently has been designated no parking uh, for the fire truck swing into uh, mm -hmm. Central Station. So we need to have some final conversations with the MBTA to finalize that. Also, I know there's been a number of conversations uh, in regards to relocating what I believe is the 80 bus bus stop in front of the Regent Theater. Um, I, I, I know uh, quite a few times I believe there's been recommendations to not uh, move it, but there's still an interest uh, in the part, as, uh, part of several Arlington Center merchants, as I understand it, to move it. So we need to take one more look at that before we make a final recommendation. Uh, and then future rate setting. Um, so tonight we're asking the board to take a look at, or to take a vote on uh, the rates that I mentioned earlier. However, we, we uh, as staff have a very uh, sincere interest in getting to a place where we're doing demand-based pricing. Uh, you've probably heard that mentioned in terms of some things Boston or larger communities are doing. Basically says there's times where a parking spot's worth more than other times. Uh, you know, when the middle of the day when there might not be a lot of uh, business in the lot or maybe on Mass Ave, you know, y y that price comes down. But when there's a big show at the region and getting parking right on Mass Ave near the region or near a restaurant is a real hot commodity, maybe that price goes up a little bit and it pushes other people into the lot. So that's not being proposed tonight, but we'd like to eventually get to the place where we uh, take a look at demand-based pricing. So uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a number of questions about this, but uh, that's sort of the run through of the proposal that's before you and hope you will look upon it favorably tonight, but happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Adam. Mr. Kira. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you um, to the manager. Um, first of all, they say don't bury the lead. For anybody who's watching this, part of what this means is those bloody machines are going to go away. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be replaced by new machines, ultimately, uh, but those machines will be gone. And uh, I think that was asked of me in my first debate when I ran for this board, so it would be great to uh, finish out my term and see that actually happen. Um, but. <clears throat> Uh, all kidding aside, um, this um, proposal has been a, a long time coming, and I think that uh, philosophically it's right where we need to be. I, I consider this probably the most important economic development measure that we, we um, have taken in, in some time um, on, on this board. I, I think I reported at one of our meetings that I had attended the MEPC's parking summit. I know a lot of the staff were there as well, and, and this is right in the place where other communities are, are, are looking to um, the demand-based demand uh, management. I, I think that the, um, <clears throat> the philosophy on the rates is uh, absolutely correct. I appreciate the manager. I forwarded some comments on the uh, composition and the uh, charter of the Implementation and Governors Committee, and I think that that uh, is also, um, I appreciate you uh, making some adjustments in the uh, recommendations. Uh, to accommodate more of the stakeholders within uh, the center um, uh, around that. Um, and um, <clears throat> I, I will say that I was, uh, what was I going to say? I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> I, I, I think that um, we're, we're right on track with this in the, in the general outlines of this. 
I did have some concerns about, about the proposal, and I think I've, I've already shared some of these with the, um, the uh, manager. Um, my initial expectation had been that we were going to be sitting here and we were going to be voting some of these, what are quoted, quote unquote, other issues that, that you listed. Um, you know, at the end, um, you know, the permits, taxes, deals, ADA spaces, loading zones, bus stops, and, and such. But I understand we're in kind of a chicken and an egg situation. And I think that as going back over the Nelson Nygaard study, I see that there are some very concrete proposals in that study around here. So having reflected on it, I think this, this does make sense uh, um, that we go in and take that as a starting point. I'm assuming that's, you're looking at that oh, as absolutely. a starting yeah, point. Oh, absolutely. That is absolutely accurate, yes. And that this, this group of stakeholders will have the opportunity to, um, to sit down and, and review that as a concrete proposal and then um, make adjustments to it. Um, one other aspect of this that I'm very, very enthusiastic about um, is the parking benefit district. I think that is really part of the key to, to gaining buy-in to this change, because we're now implementing, if, if we, assuming we adopt this, we're implementing meters on the street. That's a big change for a lot of folks. And to see a benefit come back to make uh, the center more of a welcoming place for um, visitors to the center, for residents who go there, for the merchants who are there. Um, from what I learned about benefit districts, they can be some of the capital type improvements that, yep. that you mentioned. Yes. It can also go to um, maintenance and, and town-provided maintenance that can help to fund things um, along of that nature. And I, I'm glad that you note a, a role for the stakeholders um, in that as, as we go forward. So um, all that is, is, um, is great. I'm very enthusiastic about it. The, the only thing that, that's really bothering me, and I recognize these are, these are um, just projections and estimates, is around the, the violation um, revenue. Uh, and I, I think I, I flagged this. Um, under the projected revenues, we're seeing an increase in the meter revenue, both on street and off street. Uh, obviously, on street's brand new. Uh, but we're also seeing a, a little bit of an uptick in the violation revenue. And I, I hope that that's just pessimism or optimism, deciding on, depending on which side you're on. But I, I hope that that actually doesn't come to fruition that way, because in my mind, if we're at that level of, of violation revenue, that, that level of violations, it will mean that there's something is, is off in, in the parking system. People are feeling a need to skirt the system and, and, and to violate it. And I think this is something that we've talked about, that you're welcome to Arlington shouldn't be printed in orange and on your windshield <coughs> with a violation ticket. So um, I'm all for beefing up the enforcement, and I don't know, maybe you can speak to this. I don't know if this represents, you know, um, beefed up enforcement of the existing re regulations or if you really expect that there are going to be that many more violations a as a result of these changes. But I, I would hope that, that we would see that go down even as the meter revenue goes up and could be plowed into to positive things for the district. So, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so I, I, it, it is a very good point. I know I myself said uh, when Nelson Nygaard was here presenting to the board that uh, in a proper system, you're collecting a lot more in meter revenue than you are in violation revenue. Because uh, I totally agree with the concept that this is supposed to be able to create yeah. churn and not be uh, penalizing people. That said, with a new system in place and 450 new spots that are being metered that aren't being metered today, which is a significant increase, a percentage increase in the number of actually metered spots, and on top of that, the fact that we were going to be seeking technology that would tell parking control officers when someone's meter is expired so they could be much more targeted in their enforcement, mm -hmm. uh, I would suspect in its rollout um, and in its early implementation, first year or two, there would be a spike in violations. But as people ad adapted to the new system and compliance increased, there could be a reduction in violations. So I think we want to achieve what you're describing, but early on, based on it being a new system and based on the, what the technology would enable a parking control officer to do, mm -hmm. we would see that uptick. Okay. I'm going to be cautiously optimistic that, that the regulations now are, are uniform enough that there isn't the type of confusion that leads to violations now. So um, I, I think we're going to want to track that very closely as we, oh, absolutely. As we go forward. Uh, and just lastly, I would say um, 
again, I'm glad the implementation committee is going to be looking at these, this, this set of other issues as well as having feedback into the um, uh, an, advi an advisory role around uh, investments in the parking benefit district. Uh, I would only ask that on the, um, the decisions around the ADA spaces, I would hope that that committee would consult with the Commission on Disabilities as well. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. So, and that, that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Securo. Mr. Dunn. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm delighted with this proposal. I'm really glad, I'm happy to support it. Uh, I have two, or I have a couple points about it that I want to make. Uh, one is in our planning meeting, I made this point pretty clearly, but I, have, I, I want to make it again, which is to me, so much of this needs to be driven by uh, the, the want to deliver good customer service. And that's both people who live in Arlington and people who visit from Arlington, or, excuse me, visit Arlington. And uh, we, I think, with our current parking plan, or, or with our current parking implementation, have managed to fail delivering customer good customer service. And I say, if, if nothing else, because of the number of complaints that I get about the infernal machines. And if, the, if you know, if we're provide if that if those machines are the face of Arlington and the current implementation of it, we have we've screwed it up. And uh, so. I like a lot of what's in this plan because it is an opportunity to, for us to sh reshape it in that direction. Uh, and two comments specifically, let's get rid of those machines. And two, uh, the, one of the, or the, this is also has to be, a, for us to solve these problems, so there has to be a process change. Because one of the reasons those infernal machines are so infernal is that when they break, um, first of all, someone has to figure out that they broke and they don't have any, the technology that tells us what, or sufficiently when they broke. And then when they break, they call the parking clerk, who's of course the treasurer, and the treasurer like will send will go over or send somebody over to look at it, and then they'll figure out that it's, they'll agree that it's broken. And then they'll have someone from DPW call uh, come and look, and then someone from DPW will get the vendor to come and look. And by the time you know we've gotten through all those gyrations, four days have passed, and we've written tickets, and people have walked up to those machines and you know poked and prodded at them. And so I really want us to rethink this process, like all of this, and say how is it that we can deliver a good customer service. So I appreciate you sitting through that a second time, Adam. Um, my second comment is, uh, I know we want to get this right, but let us make haste. You know, Mr. Kiro says, I gave this in his debate, I made a very similar, you know, if this was one of the things about talking about things that I wanted to get changed when I ran for Selectman two, uh, you know, three and a half years ago. And I'm delighted at the progress that we've made on so many things. You know, we have an electronic meeting format in front of us. We saw an electronic checkbook today in front of us. There's so many things we did right. Those parking meters are still there. So I can't, like, you know, if we're, honestly, if we're still, if those parking meters are still there, you know, 4th of July or something like that, I feel like we've, you know, we, we, we're going to have you get rid of them. Hmm. No. I, two years ago, I stood up at town meeting and told them what I wanted to do was throw it in the Mystic Lake. <laughs> <laughs> and I still do. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank I you. I have a big Thank truck. You. Um, <laughs> uh, first, just to, to get it on the table, I'd like to make a motion to establish the parking goals. The three of them is outlined by the manager to cr create the governance committee. Again, is out outlined by the manager and input from the board of selectmen. And third part of the motion would be to adopt a proposed parking management fee structure. And then I just would have. Second. Second. Um, just in terms of. <coughs> Mr. Kiro spoke to this. I also had it down on my piece of paper, um, in involvement of the Disability Commission. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's an ex-officio member. I don't know if it's the, the governance committee is tasked with at some point in, in their meetings that that has to be an agenda item and invited um, fact or, or group and or if it's part of the final report um, to the Board of Selectmen that they've had the opportunity to somehow be involved in the process, whether reviewing documents or being involved more, um, or I don't, I don't know if it's another ex officio member, but I really want to stress that because it's yeah. one of the things with the, some new members coming on board that basically said, and as Mr. Carroll outlined, don't forget about us, we want to help out. The other thing is um, in terms of the scope duration of the governance committee, um, what do you anticipate sort of piggybacking on you know, what Mr. Dunn said? Like if somebody, like the Board of Selectmen is going to have a designee when they say, well, what is this committee? What is expected of me? And what's the time commitment? What do you envision? And also, what's the reporting mechanism? Is this going to be a committee that meets for three months, reports back to the Board of Selectmen, meets for six months, 
maybe comes back twice. I mean, what do you imagine it would be? Recognizing that once the committee meets, they'll define the parameters that work best for them. So uh, I believe while this committee is in the implementation phase, so probably over the course of the next six months, it's going to be more frequent meetings, maybe a couple times a month, and maybe some subcommittee work that would be on top of that. Once we actually have what we're talking about here implemented, I would think this committee would probably be, uh, you know, a monthly, maybe infrequently a little bit more than that, to just make sure it's, uh, it's monitoring reports and then maybe quarterly or start quarterly, then go semi-annually coming back and reporting to the board, or maybe even more frequently when we start uh, to see how things are going. So I think it, um, it would be fair to probably say upfront, heavy loaded, and then a little bit of a evening out going forward. Mm -hmm. And do you anticipate within six months, you're saying, just setting it as a goal that we might be just about close to where we need to be so that we can take an actual step on this? Yeah, I, um, we are, and we'll talk about this actually in the next agenda item, we're going to take part in a joint procurement with the MAPC for parking meters, and that's happening very soon. Uh, um, once that's issued, I'll be able to speak a lot more clearly on exactly what the timeline will be and actually determine whether or not we can do something with the, the lot meters before the street meters, because that will take longer. The street meters will certainly take longer. Um, so probably just in the next couple of weeks, I'll have a better understanding of the exact timeline. <coughs> okay, and last housekeeping question. Um, since we have a committee of 10 with one ex officio, will the, um, is it anticipated, unless the committee feels otherwise, that the ex officio member from the planning department will be also responsible for the administration of this committee, posting agendas, taking the minutes, um, and those associated tasks that are going to be huge with this committee meeting so much in six months? That's a very good question. I actually hadn't given that consideration. Uh, I think between planning and the town manager's office, we can handle Okay, I'm task. just saying, I'm thinking with our limited staff. Um, oh, absolutely. I, absolutely. I just want that defined in the beginning, because sometimes, through nobody's mm -hmm. fault at all, it, it does fall, and it's yet another thing. So, so you're on the record. You're taking care of it. You're, 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 you're buying the, he's buying the ticket. Okay, sorry, that's all I have. And I see. Thank you. No, that, that was a great point. Um, oh, and I'll second your motion. Thank so we have a motion and a second. Um, so I really like this as well, and um, I know this is a long time coming. I've, um, Adam and I, I think we've talked about every agenda for the past three months trying to determine when we'd be ready to, uh, to put this on, and um, I, I really like what came out of it. Um, I, I do have uh, one question, then I'll, I'll make a couple more comments. Um, in the consultant's report, um, they mention, you know, uh, projects like additional bicycle parking, um, you know, some new crosswalks. Do you consider that being part of this parking implementation or potentially, you know, make, taking those steps when the benefits of the parking district come in? I, I think upgrades like that would probably most, uh, they'd probably get done quickest through the parking benefit district. Okay. No, that, that makes sense to me. I just wanted to make sure because I was reading through the report and didn't know if we were, you know, if we were kind of giving the okay to that as well. Yeah, um, if, if I can just to expand a little bit. I, I don't want to make that sound like if, you know, an opportunity presents itself to put a bike rack in an appropriate place that just hasn't presented itself before that we won't act if it's something mm -hmm. that we have within our resources. But some of the larger scale improvements that they talk about <clears throat> would be subject to having funding availability. Excellent. Um, so I, um, as I said before, I really like this. As some of you may know, I'm um, back in school right now getting my master's degree, and I'm actually taking transportation policy mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been talking quite a bit about parking. And um, this is actually spot on with what just about, I think, every community is doing really across the nation. Um, and I, I really, really like the movement towards the demand-based parking. I think that will... Um, create the right amount of turnover in Arlington Center to make sure, you know, say you want to stop by for a cup of coffee or a slice of pizza, that will, that will really help to make sure that you have, you know, a spot accessible right outside. And I think, um, you know, that incentive, you know, based format will be really beneficial to us. Um, and the other thing I will do is echo um, Mr. Dunn's comments is that, you know, the sooner the better on this. I, um, I look forward to making these changes um, ASAP. But with that, I understand all of the work that will go into it. And um, thank you for bringing this to us. Um, is anyone in the, Mr. Gilligan. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, Stephen Gilligan, town treasurer and parking clerk. Mr. Chairman, as you know, as treasurer, I went to town meeting requesting funds to replace the four parking meter kiosks, and town meeting voted that appropriation this past May. Um, I think it's important to note that we were prepared to go out to bid to replace those meters over the summer and have that work done by the middle of last month. The town manager's overall parking plan uh, hopefully encompasses that, and the manager asked that we refrain from issuing that bid. Um, I went along with that request, knowing uh, what was to come. However, I think it's important to note that based on the timeline in the manager's report, those kiosks, those parking meter kiosks, will not be replaced until late spring, if not the summer of 2015. And I think it's also important for the board to keep in mind and to take note of is that those kiosks need to be made ADA compliant. They need to be made accessible for persons with disabilities. They are not today. Furthermore, those kiosks are very unsafe. It's problematic at best, and that needs to be rectified. I think that the planning needs to go put into place now to address those issues rather than wait to go out to bid come next spring or next summer because those issues of logistics operation, safety, and collections are going to be tantamount to anything being effective once implemented. And it's more than just issuing an RFP for a particular type of equipment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Jefflein. Uh, I, I, was, I didn't see if Mr. Gilligan was here during our discussion, but um, the RFP is not going out in the spring or summer. It should be going out within the next week or so. Thank you very much. Um, yes. That's great news. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Um, any further discussion from the board? Um, any further discussion from the audience? Yes, Leland, come on up. Thank you, Leland Stein, co-owner of the Region Theater. I just wanted to uh, say in a word, hallelujah, <laughs> and uh, thank you for uh, uh, anything you can do to uh, accept the uh, proposals in front of you. Um, uh, I also want to thank Mr. Dunn for his assessment of the current meters, and uh, I want to go one step further, and this is going to sound radical, but I'd like to say that they be permanently dismantled and parking free until we get a new system in there, because it really has been so long, and if the town is worried about lost revenue, remember all of the extra revenue that has been collected because so many people did not realize that you did not have to pay after six o'clock or on Sunday. And it really would create a, a tremendous amount of goodwill for both the people in town and coming from out of town. And believe me, we hear it, you know, almost at every event because of how confusing it is even when the meters are in operation and that is rare. Also, regarding some of the uh, secondary, uh, as I understand it, things that aren't part of the proposal but are, uh, that have been recommended for discussion, uh, regarding things like the loading zones, the bus stops, and uh, the like on Medford Street and Mass Ave, some of those were addressed well before the, uh, the uh, consultants presented their proposal, so I don't quite understand why all of a sudden they're on the back burner again when they were really things that seem that they could be easily addressed ahead of time. And one of the things that was not addressed is a handicapped parking spot in front of the Regent Theater. Uh, and again, I want to say there are two handicapped spots on the other end of Medford Street in front of St. Agnes Church, and yet there is not one on the side of um, um, we're the Regent Theater side where we have so much traffic and so many people coming in and so many seniors and so many people who need a handicapped spot, let alone a drop-off spot. Lastly, regarding the uh, loading zone, for the fifth time in four years or the fourth time in five years, a truck has backed into the Regent Theater marquee. This is a serious issue because, first of all, it's a very expensive thing to replace. Uh, we've got two great film festivals coming and an ugly, broken marquee that we cannot fix in time because either the co Coke delivery truck for CVS or the Starbucks delivery trucks uh, backed into it 
when they're uh, illegally parking in uh, something that isn't designated as a loading, drone, uh, loading zone for tractor trailer trucks. And it's also quite a safety hazard because they tend to deliver many times of day, but a lot of their delivery schedule seems to be a time when we are um, seating people or people are coming into the theater or leaving the theater. And it's, it's just, uh, it, it's crazy. So I do want to make sure and emphasize that, that those considerations are addressed. And I don't know if, if there's anyone from the planning department or other departments, <coughs> departments that can kind of let us know where those things stand because uh, it's, it's, a, it's a continued frustration. And as I mentioned, it's a very real thing and a very expensive thing for this to have, to have happened again to uh, the Regent Theater's marquee. And frankly, we cannot afford to, to fix it because of the deductible on the insurance and, and those kind of things. Thank you. Thank you, Leland. Um, it does seem like this strategy will um, you know, address those concerns, and I look forward to um, you know addressing this in in you know very much comprehensive um, way, and not just doing it piecemeal. And I think that's the best strategy to accomplish um, you know the needs in Arlington Center for um, parking regulations. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none. Any further discussion from the board? We have a uh, motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you, Adam. Um, <coughs> moving on. For approval, Community Innovation Challenge Grants. Um, <coughs> Mr. Chapdelaine. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so uh, I believe you're all familiar with the Community Innovation Challenge Grants that uh, the Governor uh, Patrick's administration started several years ago, I believe back in 2012. Uh, open Checkbook is actually made possible by a Community Innovation Challenge grant that we jumped on after the fact, after it was awarded to the original communities that applied. Um, and one part about Community Innovation Challenge grants is that the Board of Selectmen needs to authorize us signing on to uh, any grant applications under this grant program. So tonight, I'm actually asking for the Board's authorization for four different grant applications. One, we would be the lead on. Three, we would be participants or supporters on. The first one is a grant that uh, Arlington would be the lead on, and we'll call it a Visual Budget Enhancement. Um, uh, the group that has been, uh, that really created uh, Arlington Visual Budget, uh, members of the Finance Committee, former selectmen, town manager's office, as well as the local company in Volution Studios, have been uh, talking about ways to stabilize and improve Arlington Visual Budget, as well as it, uh, expand its access to other communities across the Commonwealth. So um, we've, um, worked on putting together a grant application that we'd like the board to approve us signing on tonight. Uh, has a goal, again, of creating it as even a more robust planning tool that could uh, even have better uh, civic engagement properties. Uh, we want to grow to at least uh, 20 communities by the end of 2015 that would start using this tool. Uh, add features that um, you know, could spe uh, specifically drill down into debt service, move between budgets, generate multi-year forecasts. Um, and make, um, make it even uh, easier for a user to use and to upload uh, or download data. So uh, right now I know we have um, Newburyport, Salem, Melrose, and Cohasset on board to sign on to this grant, so we'd like uh, board approval to be able to be the lead applicant uh, for this particular grant. Do you want to stop at each one? I'm going to run through all. Uh... Um, you know, I think that we can do potentially one vote for all of the... Okay. Um, yes, so please um, go on. The second grant is tied into uh, the visual budget tool, but we would be a supporting applicant to the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, or the MAPC. And this is a grant application for the creation of a municipal financial data standard. Uh, I provided the board a little bit of further backup produced by the MAPC on why this is important. Uh, <clears throat> I personally really love this grant. When we put together a lot of our budget documents, we always try to compare ourselves to other communities. And there's a lot of good ways for us to do that with Department of Revenue data, but there's still a lot of limitations on how we can do that. Uh, and a lot of that just has to do with how municipalities can report their departmental expenditures in different ways. And that's okay, but it creates difficult comparisons. Uh, the example I'll use is, uh, you know, we have a water sewer enterprise fund, so we have all of those revenues put out separately and all of those costs separately. 
Burlington just collects water and sewer fees as a local receipt in their general fund budget. So they probably report DPW expenses much different than we report DPW expenses. So if we were going to compare ourselves, they'd <coughs> instantly be apples and oranges. Uh, so the idea of trying to create one data standard that we can use in all of our different tools, namely the visual budget, uh, budget tool, is very exciting to me. Um, it's a lot of work, uh, but getting to a point down the road where you know, two communities that are using Arlington Visual Budget, and you could type in an average tax bill and see that, you know, Arlington spends 50 bucks a year of your tax bill on snow, but, you know, Winchester spends 70, or, or whatever that number would be, would really give uh, the citizen the ability to see, what am I getting for my dollar? Am I getting a good bang for my buck um, for my municipality? So that's the municipal data standard grant. Uh, the third grant, uh, I was approached by the town manager in Needham who had an interest in uh, pursuing a grant to help do some analysis and then recommend best practices for tablet use in the field by inspectors uh, from uh, inspectional services, board of health, uh, fire department, who are doing field work with tablets, I guess even police department uses. Uh, it's something that we already have as part of our IT uh, strategic plan. Several departments are looking at that and wanting to, uh, to use that. So this grant would um, help pay for a consultant to come in, help us make some recommendations, and then also buy some hardware and software. Uh, so I think this is a, a no-brainer to jump on to. Uh, and then the final one, a little bit different than the first three, uh, is tied back into parking meters. The MAPC is running a joint procurement, as I mentioned earlier, for parking meters. We're going to sign on to that joint procurement. Uh, but they also are applying for uh, a Community Innovation Challenge grant. And any community that is either pricing parking that's currently not priced or pursuing demand-based pricing would be eligible to apply for this grant. So we're definitely, uh, after the board's vote tonight, putting parking where there currently isn't uh, priced parking, and we're at least talking about demand-based pricing. So we definitely qualify and could qualify under both accounts. Um, so uh, the, the current structure would be that if they were successful in getting this grant, participating communities could get up to $20,000 to buy down the capital investment of new metering technology. So happy to answer any questions. I think these are all good opportunities for the town to, uh, to get on board and uh, in some ways innovate and in some ways just try to support some innovation that's already happening in town. So thank you very much, approval. Mr. Chaplain. Um, Ms. Mon. Uh, first, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the town manager to sign on to four separate CIC grant applications. One is the lead applicant and three as participant and supporter. Second. That's appropriate. Perfect. And then um, we're getting really excited by a lot of these agenda <laughs> items tonight, so that means we have no life or we're doing some really good things. Um, this is another a, a innovative way to open up government and take the technology that we have as well as getting, getting information out, whether it's to our employees or whether it's to our citizens. I really want to applaud you, Mr. Chapelain, the town manager, for really being at the forefront of this as well as um, I take away from some of the grants and how they came to be, you know, when you are the um, lead supporter or lead requester, but um, I really want to applaud you. Um, you did this as deputy town manager and you've certainly magnified it on it as a town manager that um, you are very well known in the town manager circle um, just by the sheer fact that one of your colleagues from another town has approached you as well as you have approached where you, you are requesting to be the lead um, requester. Um, you've reached out to other communities and not just the uh, abutting adjacent communities. Not that there's anything wrong with Lexington, Medford, Burlington, uh, Belmont, Somerville. They're all great, but um, I think that's a testament to one of the things when we were looking for a town manager um, that we really wanted to make sure that, you know, recognize your jurisdiction as the town of Arlington, but also getting us out to the state and tapping <coughs> into some of these new ways to get um, municipal <coughs> business done. Um, the only question I would have, um, and, and that's, I really, I would like to go on and on about that, but I know we have a lot of people here, so. Um, the only thing that doesn't necessarily need to be answered tonight, unless you have it off the top of your head, um, the first would be, I see on one of them, uh, I think it was the last one, there's a, a $20,000 figure cited. I'm just curious on one, two, and three, is it going to be that once you find out if we are approved, then you'll know the scope of what the funding is and or what will be your reporting back to the Board of Selectmen? You're gonna, is, when it gets awarded, then we'll get all the details and you'll go? Once the grant applications are all finalized this week, I'll send the final copies uh, on Friday to the Board so you'll know on Friday. Uh, visual budget, I believe we're asking for $95,000 to get 20 communities up and running. 
Um, and that's, again, not just Arlington. There's a, a great cooperation with Involution Studios in that regard. Um, the municipal data standard, I, I'm not clear exactly what they're asking for, but I can get that number. Um, the field tablet use, we're asking for uh, $75,000 per community for both that consulting time, hardware, and software purchases. Uh, and then I don't know what the total number will be for the MAPC, but it will be that uh, $20,000 per community. But I, I will follow up. Yeah, no, when you can get a handle on that, because I'd like to show that um, while we're taking the um, request from citizens and helping our employees in terms of um, how we do business and how we do business effectively and, and with as much transparency as possible, that similar to when we went before the voters with an override, one of the promises that we all made was that we are going to try to find different ways to fund things. Um, you know, we come to you for an override and we don't want you to think that we're not tr lifting up every rock looking for m money and funding. And I think this, I mean, <coughs> we're talking six figures right here alone, just by, it's whether it's high, low, middle six figures, but, um, you know, in an $80 million budget, that may not seem like a lot, but I know a lot of people who live in nickels to dimes. I think um, innovative uh, exploration of getting funds like this for something that really will be a town municipal function um, is a good demonstration that we are keep, keeping our commitment to the voters in terms of when we've gone before them for overrides. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Further comments? Seeing none, is anyone here to discuss this agenda item? Seeing none as well. Um, yeah, I just want to say this is really awesome work. I, this is something I really love seeing on the agenda. Um, kudos to Adam yeah, for that. Um, yeah, and you know, going off, we talk a lot about regionalization um, and working with other communities, and that's something we had tasked Adam to do, particularly in our town manager and board goal setting, and um, is really following through. Um, so yeah, this is a great opportunity, and I um, look forward to uh, seeing its benefits. So that being said, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? I have nothing to vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chaplain. Um, moving on, um, discussion and vote for the draft selectman's handbook. Um, so as uh, we heard at our last meeting, Kevin, uh, Kevin Greeley is really spearheading um, this, but unfortunately he couldn't be here today. He had to be out of town on a work assignment. That being said, um, I do want to discuss it. Um, I talked to Kevin and um, he's really given quite a bit of input with to uh, Doug and I've um, also been um, working with Kevin on this so um, my comments have already um, been heard as well. But I would like to hear what the board thinks, um, any changes and um, just once again I'd like to reiterate that this is a really important step that we're taking and um, developing this policy handbook and it will go quite a long way to um, you know making everyone's life a little bit easier um, when you join the selectmen when you're working in town working with us and um, yeah it's really cool so that being said I would like to just open it up for discussion to my colleagues Mr. Kira I, I was very very pleased to uh, to see the first uh, draft here I you know um, I think it sets it's great to start with the tone setting and the uh, the charter for for the board. Um, it's what we had before us. We're not into the meat of actual mm. policies or whatnot. Uh, but you know, we were discussing. You know, a lot of the, the boards and committees here always talk about the difficulty with onboarding processes, and this this I think will help. You know, when the next next new selectman comes on board to uh, to to help. Um, help them to be oriented and uh, understand their role a little bit better. Um, I did have just um, one little question here. Um, we do enumerate some of the responsibilities for the selectmen, and um, I meant to look this up today, but I didn't know if a word is missing. It, it's in class one and two, and it feels like there's a noun missing there. Um, Under service, the licensing board responsible for issuing and renewing um, licenses for the following categories. Yes, on page four. Um, so it's between lodging houses, innkeeper, and secondhand dealer. I'll turn first um, class one and two. It's. Mm. Yeah, um, Doug, do you? Um, uh, I'll have to take a look at that, but. Um, I'm trying to recall what the class one and two licenses that the uh, board typically issues are. 
unfortunately, we're a little bit disadvantaged because the board administrator isn't here. Yeah. Uh, Marianne, who handled a lot of the licenses and permitting, isn't here as well. Um, it, it looks like a word may have just inadvertently mm -hmm. dropped out. Um, and I, I meant to look it up and see if I could find it in the bylaws somewhere, but I, I just didn't have a chance today. Um, the other thing um, that I believe the board has in its purview is to um, to actually serve as the um, appellate body for step five uh, disability complaints, ADA complaints. I'm pretty sure under, under our uh, current plan that that's the case. And it seems that we should probably mention that as well, although I don't, I don't believe it's exercise very often if, if um, it ever has. Yeah. Can you just say where that was one more time? Um, I'm not sure exactly. I'd actually defer to you and to oh, council as to okay. where we would put it in, but it, I believe that is one of the duties. Um, I, I think it would be under, uh, according to conjunction with the general laws, the board possesses the following duties responsibilities. Actually, this I don't think is a general, the general laws. I think it's actually the disability um, okay. plan for the town, okay. the plan for the town. Mr. Chairman, the appellate body. Sure. Yeah. May, may I interject for just one yes, second? Yes, please. Uh, just to provide a sort of, uh, sort of uh, quick summary of, of what I hope that the board can achieve tonight if it can come to some reasonable agreement on these sort of sections or chapters that are before you. Um, the sort of plan that Mr. Greeley has laid out is the idea that the board will be voting on the language to the extent that it it's complete in any given section so that it would become almost an interim policy document mm -hmm. and then that you would go back at the end of this process and decide, you know, does the document, once it's all put together with each chapter, really make sense? Is there too much in here? Is there not enough in here? Mm -hmm. um, are there some pieces of information that we feel like should be moved to a different section of it? Are there some responsibilities that we want to highlight more? Things of that nature. So these lists under uh, the sort of second chapter here, powers, duties, and responsibilities, are not meant to be exhaustive, um, but they're meant to highlight the sort of um, major powers, duties, and responsibilities you have, the things that are going to come up most frequently. So I've got no objection to um, inserting um, uh, serving as the appellate body over disability complaints, for example, and we could find out exactly how that would be articulated. But this is not meant to be an exhaustive list of everything that the board does. It's merely a highlight of the things that the, boards do, the board does, the functions and roles that it serves in obvious, either more, most significantly or most commonly. So I just wanted to emphasize that point for a second. So any uh, additions and changes that you want me to make, I'm happy to make. And we can obviously bring it back to the board for a second time for a final authorization of an interim, basically, policy. With these first couple chapters where they're not really focused on policies as much as there's some background information, including obviously the sort of, if you will, it's only a page and a half, but chapter one, there's going to be a history inserted by Mr. Richard Duffy. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's not there yet. There's going to be a little bit of revision that, 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 that comes along, along the way. So. Uh, if there's things that you feel uh, you want me to insert, I'm happy to do that. But I want to assure you that for these, at least first two pieces of it here, this is meant to be sort of basic background information and, and, and guidance. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And I, thank you for that explanation. I appreciate that. And just once again, I also appreciate the, the emphasis on the you know, the code of conduct, ethics, and such. I think it just it sets a good tone for the rest of the document. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. I I like I, I like it as well, and in particular that last point that Joe made. Uh, it's the right tone, but it's also the right statement, which is this is the way it 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 care it well, it well. There's a line you have to walk that is this is what you should do as a selectman, and this is what you can and can't do. Mm -hmm. And there are things, and it doesn't try to say that you can't when really you can't. I mean, does any one of us have the right, uh, can we be jerks? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, yes we can, but we shouldn't be. <laughs> and uh, this goes a lot into about how that, and I think it, it, the language is really well uh, phrased about how, how that can go. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I like the draft as we see it. Thank you. Um, that I will say one thing that even, you know, in developing this and, you know, talking to Kevin, it is, um, one thing that's difficult for me is keeping in mind that we're a very well-functioning board, in my opinion, and uh, the, uh, you know this being a document that will span, you know, hopefully 
or most likely pass all of our time here, <laughs> that this will, um, we can't predict what future boards will be like. So it's important to keep them in mind and maybe they aren't as great as we are. Um, at that point, <laughs> the constructionists. At that point, anyway. <laughs> um, Diane. Um, I'm not sure if what I'm going to propose is in concert with what town council um, was requesting or suggesting, and/or if you all would agree. You know mm -hmm. my vocation, and um, sometimes that comes into selectmen too much. What I would like to do, I, mean, I just would like to put this forth as. Um, a possible motion. I would like to move receipt of this document as a draft. I'm really um, cautious in terms of, especially a document that we're really going to be judged by as we should. Um, until something is in its final form, I, I don't care if somebody else can come up with some other language, but until we take the final vote on this, because um, what I was hearing was, can you vote this in sort of this is what's in place, there's some more pieces to come. Um, to me, I'd like to continue to view this as a draft, um, so make a motion to receive this document as a draft. Um, let everything else get put in, and then in the next four or eight weeks or whenever Mr. Grayley and the chairman think it's the appropriate time, then we vote it officially and say, yes, um, this is an official document. Because what I'm hearing is I want you to give it some official position right now but it is still a draft and there are still some things coming and we will incorporate, like I don't know if we still have a role and or if it's in here or if it's defined differently in our board of survey role, if that's inherent in there somewhere. Um, I don't know if we still, I know some of it through a town meeting vote, some of our responsibilities went to the redevelopment board but I know that we still play a very minor role to that and that may be included in the highway or something like that but that's just things you know that we're all going to work out in the future so I don't know how my colleagues feel about that so um, I'll second it for the purpose of discussion thank you um, I, I would like to hear Doug's thoughts on it just to make sure we're working within the legal ramifications so when I call this a draft document, I call it a draft document because it's subject to your revision and approval at this meeting. Now, you guys can take as much time as you feel is appropriate, of course, but to be sort of upfront with the board about how long this process is expected to take, the board has a lot of areas of, jurisdic of jurisdiction. It's got a lot of policies and practices that right now might be codified in different places. They aren't either centrally codified, haven't been updated in a long time, or things that are really more of a practice, things that haven't been necessarily outlined and clarified. Um, so by keeping it in draft form until it's, until it's all complete, you'd be waiting quite a long time. I don't think uh, Mr. Greeley and Mr. Byrne may be able to speak to this as well, but I don't think Mr. Greeley expects this to be done in you know, eight or 10 weeks. I think he expects this to probably take the better part of nine months or so because as each policy comes in, some policy is going to be very uh, detailed and uh, going to involve a lot of sort of intense discussion. We may need more than one meeting even to get through certain sections of what is at least anticipated when you saw that outline that Mr. Greeley provided you at the board's last meeting. Some of those things are going to take a significant amount of time for the board to, to go through. There may be only one subject that the board gets through at a given meeting. So the idea of the sort of interim policy was um, rooted in the idea that as you go through and approve these things, you'd have a sort of interim policy that's in place until it's completed so that there's some sort of building of a foundation over time as to this is how the board's policies are slowly coming together. Um, I obviously uh, respect that the board may have sort of a different view on the ideal way to do that. But I don't think I would characterize it in terms of some sort of liability or legal obligation. Mm -hmm. What I would characterize it is, as right now, there's a lot of sort of, um, there's a pastiche, if you will, of different things that are sort of holding together the board's policies, practices, and procedures. They're not all, not all of them have been updated recently. Some of them have been updated recently. Some of them are, again, more rooted in practice than in a written policy. So. As we go through this, if the board's so inclined to adopt these things as an interim policy that it could then be subject to a final revision, you'd have something in place over the course of the, like I said, nine months or so while I expect to have this be developed. But it, that's obviously at the board's discretion and what the board would like to do in terms of how it wants to structure this process. Thank you, Doug. Um, 
So I, I will say as, you know, someone who is working on this, I feel pretty strongly about um, doing far more than moving receipt um, on this. Um, it, it, for, you know, how I see this working is that, you know, we need, or at least I would feel more comfortable knowing that doing this on a piece by piece basis that we have the support and that you know after there's quite a bit of work done on this that we're not going to simply move receipt now and then come back and say a year or so and then have you know thousands of revisions that you know will have to be discussed at that time um, so i think for the sake of how this process, or at least how I saw this process working, that I would, you know, really, I think it would be, would be better off, you know, taking a vote as we move our way through this process. But that being said, I'd like to hear, yes. Um, I, I think I'm inclined to agree with you, Mr. Byrne. Mrs. Mahan, the, the reason that I'm, I, I'm not worried about the ramifications of this is because it is, it's a handbook as opposed to, and I don't feel bound by the, you know, it's, a, it's when, I, when I think about where, or what we're doing, I do not feel bound by any of the things in this, as in, as in we, are, we will not be bound in our future actions. Well, there's nothing that we're agreeing to in here that will keep us from being able to exercise any of the powers or responsibilities that we get by, by being a member of this board. Uh, and so, for instance, you know, when it talks about like this is this is the introduction. I'm talking about this is the handbook. You got an overview about what the Arling, about what Arlington is, the powers, duties, and responsibilities. We are neither adopting nor pow any powers nor are we giving them away. And we're not even trying to enumerate them all. We're re referring to all the other places that give us those powers. And so, if we miss one, you know, whatever, it's not gonna. We don't lose that power because of it. And similarly, in the code of conduct, that part that I really liked about the language, where it says, a member of the board um, should conduct him or herself with an understanding that the basic function is to make policy. Like, you know, that's not a something that if I do it wrong, you know, I can't be thrown out, and I'm not doing. It. So for all those reasons, uh, I would prefer that uh, that we move forward and, and adopt this. And if we, if there's anything in here that actually does encumber us in some way that would be negative, we should bring it up. We should talk about it. We should remove it. I don't see any, and therefore I'm, I'm prepared to s support. So, having having seconded okay. your motion, all I'll, right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm uh, going to yeah. I'm going to go with the, what the majority of you all want to do, with the caveat that if the circumstance that I'm foreseeing in my head does arise, it's going to fall to town council because um, we have had some instances in the past, and I'm thinking of the, you know the the uh, uh, play pen that we all play in, and who else is involved in that, um, and I. I'm just looking at it in terms of, I know legally, in terms of if, I think if any attorney was advising somebody that, you know, was going to adopt something that you could be measured by, that um, it would be kind of foolhardy if it's done piecemeal. I'm, I'm not trying to make a big thing out of this. It's just that once we do adopt this, this is going to be used by perhaps a few people um, to exercise their right to use it whatever way they want to do that. Um, and I, I'm, I'm kind of leery of pointing out what I think from the legally, limited legally size, side that I have, um, what those areas are, because then I feel, you know, am I creating um, the, the very scenario that I am concerned about? So if you all want to adopt this tonight, you can. Um, I'll be happy to go through that and then through the chairman, um, if, if everyone's agreeable with this, because um, there are two areas that I, again, reading it from the legal side, that I do um, have some concerns and questions about. So if I follow up with the chairman on that, um, I'm probably not Can, saying it's So, exactly so what, what, what I, how I at least envision this is that not even just adopting it, but these issues that you're talking about, the point of having this discussion is to make it so we, it's a policy and what we're moving forward with is something we can all agree on and that the, the purpose of putting this on every agenda is so we can hash it out and we can hear what everyone thinks about it. And I, I and so I think that that, you know, that should kind of alleviate some concerns that, you know, if you see issues with that, I think this is, you know, the point where we discuss them and that's what these meetings are for. Um, Mr. Dunn. Uh, so that said, I, I, so I agree with that and I, and so, 
what I would be supportive of is um, a motion to postpone for to a future meeting such that we can if you want <coughs> if you want to if, if there's something you want to talk about there's language you want to change that you think you can be best resolved by talking directly to town council and then we come back and we actually take a vote I think that the, in, in the interest of getting a document that we all like I absolutely am in favor like I would have no problem with postponing but my for me the postponing would be postponing until we can really actually just say yes this is the first chapter of the first draft of uh, or excuse me this is the first chapter of the uh, Handbook. No, no I, I yeah. want to keep the interest of the work that's been done and moving it forward. If, if we want to adopt this as an initial document, I do have two areas um, of concern, and I don't want to waste anybody's time and, and brain matter. I, I want to, if it's appropriate, follow up with the chairman and, the, um, and town council, and if those, you know, I'm just overthinking things and it's nothing to be concerned about, then we don't have to spend any more time on it. If it is something um, that the chairman or, or town council feels is ambiguous or perhaps um, creating a, a situation that we should all be uh, aware of, then discuss it at the next meeting that we're talking about adopting things. And so I have no problem adopting that tonight. I just wanted to get it on the record, my comments, just in case something should happen in the future that I can get somebody else to fall on the sword. <laughs> can, I, can I interject with something? Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, is that okay? Please. I, 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 it's my strong opinion that this board shouldn't feel rushed into adopting a policy or, or, or codifying a practice that it's not comfortable with, and that if the board feels that it needs more time to review the document, to think about the document, to evaluate what it wants to have in here and what it doesn't, um, I'm all in favor of that. Um, and I'm also want to note that, yes, it's true that if you adopt a policy handbook that sets forth, say, a code of conduct, um, that code of conduct may not be um, tantamount to state ethics laws or uh, to you know have the force of the open meeting law, but it's a policy and a practice that you're adopting, and so it shouldn't be adopted with the you know anticipation that it won't be followed. And I don't think that anybody on the board is is saying that here. So, but to put those two things together, if there's a concern about whether or not something in this handbook would be used against the board in some kind of way that someone's not comfortable with, I think it should be fully vetted and I have no concerns about um, taking more time than less time on a specific policy. What I want to get to, Mr. Byrne sort of highlighted though, is that whether you adopt them all at once or whether you adopt them sort of, you know, one sort of piece of this policy at a time, just makes is really a matter of logistics in my mind because once the sort of handbook's complete, you can say all these things are now in effect, and whatever else was in effect later has all gone away in an instant. Or you can take it one step at a time and say, okay, this is just our establishment of what the board, what we think of as the board's sort of major powers, duties, and responsibilities summary is right now, and then this is what we think the board's code of conduct would be. I don't anticipate that things should be changing hugely in a material way once you guys get that full handbook, but one way or the other, the policy is going to come into effect, and whether you do it all at once or you do it piece by piece, um, you are going to be binding yourselves. It's just a question of what's the most efficient way to go about doing it so that the discussion can be robust and relatively efficient. So you're not saying, oh, geez, you know, we're adopting a you know, 50 page policy manual. I just can't talk about chapter six at this point in time because we just spent, you know, two hours talking about chapter five. That's, I think, the approach that was, was contemplated. And um, I just wanted to make sure I, I added that perspective on that context. Thank you. Um, yes, Joe. So I, I think all of that having been said, I, I think I, I feel comfortable with what Dan has suggested, uh, which would be to, to postpone with the anticipation that we will adopt, mm -hmm. we will adopt. Um, the, the draft at presumably at the next meeting to give Ms. Mahan, you know, chance to consult with uh, council on that. Um, and the only other thing that I, I would just reiterate that I, I think we discussed the last time around this is um, as you move into the some of the other governance issues on the handbook, um, it might be helpful if one of the next sections that was looked at was um, just the process by which this handbook would be reviewed and or amended in the future. And, and, I, and that might uh, allay some of the concerns. Yep. 
No, they're been raised. Second. So with that, I will. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and I want to apologize because I I misinterpreted. Um, I would have had these conversations. I was on the phone with the town manager today about five or six things. But the way I read the wording was we were going to vote a draft, mm -hmm. and that's why. Because I, I don't want to be disrespectful of the chairman's time and Mr. Greeley and um, town councils. Uh, if I, I had realized that more of, of, of a step was being asked, then I would have had the phone calls to say I have these concerns. They're valid. I have these concerns that, well, if they're not valid, I'm, I don't bring them up. So I just want to make sure that there's no disrespect meant by that. And I apologize. I should have maybe paid a little more attention. Okay. So we have a um, motion and a second. Um, oh, further comments. I just want to say I'm delighted to take the time to get it right. I am not a person. I, I, I'm, I'm sure there's some, yeah, I'm glad we're taking the time. Okay. Is there any further discussion on this? I know. Um, Everyone in the audience, this is more of an internal uh, policy issue, but thank you for bearing with us. It is uh, critically important. And um, the only other thing I will say is that uh, yeah, I, um, I do envision these, you know, being very, you know, high level, you know, in-depth discussions, and um, I hope that we can have those, um, you know, moving forward. Um, so with a motion and a second, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Moving forward, um, number nine, we have an addendum request for, um, from the Arlington International Film Festival for um, a few different things. The placement of sandwich board signs, um, the suspension of metered parking in Arlington Center, um, the relocation of a bus stop in front of the Regent Theater, and the permission to park a fish car in front of Regent Theater. Not something I thought I would be saying in the microphone. <laughs> but um, that being said, April, uh, please come forward. Good evening. Um, I'm April Rank, representing the Arlington International Film Festival. Um, the three locations that we would like to place the sandwich boards um, would be at Mass Ave and Route 16 in the median strip, um, Mass Ave and Route 60, median strip, and Mass Ave and Park Avenue. Um, they're white sandwich boards. They have uh, our poster on both sides, and they're neatly done uh, and not tacky. So as many sandwich boards are, I just wanted to put that out there. <coughs> um, this would be just during the festival uh, up until the 20th of October. Uh, the festival runs October 15 through uh, 19. Um, the suspension of metered parking in Arlington Center, uh, when we originally uh, requested that, we didn't have the uh, program complete. It would only affect uh, the programming for Saturday. We'll be starting Saturday at 4 o'clock. Um, other nights, will be, it'll be 7 o'clock, and then Sunday, it's, it's not relevant. Uh, and the last thing, um, well, not the last thing, um, I respect the fact that you all are discussing long-term solutions with regard to the bus stop in front of the Regent. Um, it's a little um, disconcerting when people are coming in to the theater and you've got puffs of black smoke and, uh, and them revving their engines and people are asking, you know, is it upstairs or downstairs or <coughs> questions and it's, it's just not a very welcoming uh, environment to enter the theater. Um, so I don't know if anything could be done temporarily um, while you're thinking about a permanent solution, but I just wanted to request. Um, the other is uh, the fish car. The fish car has been parked in, at the Shell Station uh, in Arlington uh, Heights for a period of time. We have um, uh, an Arlington resident, uh, William Tur Turville, that is um, an artist, and he had offered to park the car in front of the Regent for opening night and put lights on it as kind of this artistic um, welcoming to uh, the, the people that are going into the theater for opening night. So I believe that that pretty much summarizes, um, and I appreciate the time to speak to you uh, verbally about these requests. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, questions, discussion from the board? Yes, Dan, Joe. Uh, yeah, so Joe. it sounds like we have th really three um, requests, maybe four requests here before us. The first, I think, uh, is it comes about as a result of our discussions last um, week where we had talked about sorry. the other. Uh, sorry, uh, Ted, if you could just wait until um, after we're done discussing, then I'll call you up. 
Uh, it was about this item. Yeah. Um, no, we're gonna we're discussing this item right now amongst the okay, board, and so then I'll open it up. Anybody, uh, I'll open it up to discussion uh, afterwards. Thanks. Okay, um, I, I think that this this parking meter request came about as a result of our discussion last week. We we had done this for the um, the Madden America uh, festival. It's happening this this coming week. Although, did I understand, Ms. Rank, that that the Saturday hours just begin at four? So really, we're only talking two hours. Yeah, that's not good. Suspending the, the meters, so. Can I just ask, it's, so it's not two weeks free parking, it's just two Saturdays? It's one, one Saturday. It's one Saturday. One it's two Saturday. hours on one Saturday. So in, in effect, really, it's a three hour limit on those meters, so it doesn't even actually impact impact you. I, I don't know, my understanding was that there was an issue last year with the volunteers for the festival. Okay. I don't know if you could address that or, or not. <clears throat> That's true, and the programming also was much earlier um, on Saturday. We started at 11.30, so it was really an issue for all day Saturday. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what time do you anticipate your volunteers reporting? One hour early, uh, so it would be 3, 3 o'clock on Saturday. So could I, suggest, could I suggest that we suspend the meters starting at 3 o'clock on that, on that day? So. Uh, so let me make that as a motion because I think we've got some very different items here. So I'll move that that second. we suspend the meters. So a lot of we have a motion and a second. Um, is anyone here to discuss uh, strictly the um, the suspension of parking in the lot um, from three to six on Saturday? Yeah, special suspension of the yeah yeah. yeah. Yes. The hearing aids aren't working so good. So, um, my, my name is Ted Peluso, and uh, nobody asked me to come here, believe it or not. Uh, I came here when I saw it on the addendum. And I want to just make two points. Point number one, anything you can do to help promote the International Film Festival is good for this town. It's good for this town because there have been all kinds of studies to show that the arts generate a lot of economic activity, whether it's restaurant activity, retail activity. And I'm telling you from my long history that I know that's true, okay? So anything you can do for these folks to help uh, them make it a big success for the town is good for the town. That's number one. And number two, I want to point out something that I think is very important. Uh, I'm here talking as myself, not as a member of the ATED committee. But I will tell you that there's almost an extra member on the ATED committee for the last six months, and that's Alberto Guzman. He has been as involved in the success, hopefully, <coughs> of the Visitor Center to a great extent, much greater beyond, than beyond his own interest in the Arlington International Film Festival. It was his idea for the video. We did it, but it was his idea. Uh, I sat there by myself at the Feast of the East, uh, and he sat there with me and talked to everybody about why Arlington is a wonderful place when ATED took a tent. He's been in that booth almost as much as I've been, and Angela Ozuski, and Roly also. So what I'm saying is, if you can do anything that makes sense, it makes sense for the town, and quite honestly, they've earned it. It's that simple. Thank you very much, Ted. Is anyone else here to uh, discuss the suspension of parking? Seeing none, we have a motion on the table. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. So on Saturday from 3 to 6, the parking lot will be free. Um, it's a week from this Saturday, yeah. Yeah, a week from yeah. this Saturday, sorry. Um, moving on. Now, um, Would you like so, me to continue? Yeah, please. Do, Mr. <laughs> um, the, ne the next request concerns the MBT bus, and I really don't know, I'm not sure what we are able to do about that. I mean, my understanding is, uh, Mr. I noticed that the uh, manager has something to say about this. So. Please, Mr. Chapman. So I, I did check with planning today who checked with the MBTA. Uh, the MBTA uh, uh, 
to notify us that it, should the board vote to temporarily move the bus stop, they would comply and treat it just like it was a construction project. Uh, we would need to figure out exactly where that location move is to, but it is within the board's powers to take such a vote tonight if it chose to. Did, did planning have any thoughts about where that, that might be moved to? Uh, I uh, frankly did not get into that uh, level of detail because we sort of just seen this for the first time uh, today. But I, I think this stop has been moved temporarily in the past. I, I could be wrong. So we, we could take a look at what's been done before. We can only do Fidelity House across from St. Mm -hmm. Agnes or I don't know. I'm so. that's did we ever move this during Arlington Alive or only the 87? We have not. We've moved the other bus stop during Arlington Alive. And so if, if they were, you know, willing to, to move it around to the place that we use then, it's over by the um, Veterans Memorial out on. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, folks might not be able to find it very easily yeah, or uh, far so. out. This is the problem with this. So, um, if so, so I'm not, su I'm not sure on, the, on this, this request. And I think I, I explained in some communications with uh, Mr. Guzman, Ms. Rank, that this, this one's a little bit problematic. It's been problematic for a long time, and I think we recall our board discussed this, you know, a permanent solution to this, and then we, we pulled back because we realized some of the issues um, there. So I frankly, I'm not feeling comfortable unless, unless I hear, you know, confidence that there's a way to, to reasonably accommodate the request. Um, so, um, I mean, so what I, I think is that um, I agree with you that this might be a little tricky, and um, I think that if we had, you know, a few more weeks, we probably yeah. could have arranged this. I think that it's really too last minute mm -hmm. to kind of try to maneuver. <laughs> um, you know, there, there's a lot of moving parts here, and I think that reining everyone in within the next week or so is uh, yeah. could be a bit of a big task, and I wouldn't want to you know, approve this and say have something, you know, come up between now and then and have to, you know, revert back. Um, so, and, you know, when you think about um, precedence, I think right. that, you know, moving forward, we have to consider the time it takes between a request and how we can actually implement it. So, so for those reasons, I, I think that it's probably in our, in my opinion, it's in our best interest to not um, move forward with that yeah, request right yeah, now. Yeah. So that was that one. That was my inclination not to put a motion out. Uh, uh, as far as the next request regarding Mr. Turville and the fish car, I think we've, we've all enjoyed the, the fish car. It actually is a, it's becoming increasingly associated with our art scene here in Arlington. If, if the board uh, feels so inclined, I'd, I'd be prepared to, to move that we do allow the placement of that vehicle in the uh, parking spot immediately in front of the, the bus stop. So that's, I think that's right in front of it. Worry, I think it's, it's by Worry and, and by, no, it's actually by the book rack, by the book rack. Yeah. Is that for opening night? Are you looking just for opening night? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Second. That sounds good to me. So we have a motion in a second. Is anyone here to discuss this item or would like to talk about it? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. And then the last item that we were asked about were sandwich boards. Um, you know, I discussed this with council. That this uh, this really doesn't isn't within the board's purview to 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 take up this. I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Uh, sure, Mr. Hein, if, Mr. The town council. If you'd like me to, thank you, Mr. Uh, Vice Chairman. <clears throat> um, the board can take a vote to express this endorsement of the use of these sandwich board signs, but it wouldn't obviate the applicants from having to undergo the process to comply with the zoning bylaw, which is a separate process that involves a different authority. If that summary is adequate, if there's anything else you guys would okay. like to discuss about that, I'd be happy to do it. So if, you, if you'd like to take a vote of support. Um... Okay, and I would, I would move to um, endorse the, re the, the, um, the request um, as presented to us for uh, promotional boards for the Arlington International Film Festival, uh, provided that, uh, subject to all conditions are set for. That sounds reasonable. Um, do we have a second? Second. I see, I see uneasiness with the way that's yes. worded. Uh, Dan. Um, so, sandwich boards are a problem. Be, or at least, like for us, because we—it's correct me if I'm wrong. 
because we're figuring out that uh, some of the, our past practice is n not consistent with what the bylaws actually said. It's not the first time that you know practice and bylaws have diverged. But is is that a fair description of where we are right now? A fair description of where we are right now is the zoning bylaw. Yeah. Uh, controls signage yep. in the town of Arlington. There's some. Uh, there's a portion of the town bylaws that discusses the selectman's authority over what's really billboard oriented signs mm -hmm. and different than the type of signage the applicants are talking about. So at best, all I'm saying that the board can do is both their general endorsement of the use of these signs, but that would not, again, be satisfactory for the purposes of town zoning, which has to go to a different authority. Mr. Chairman, if I can keep going. Yes, please do. Uh, is there, uh, do you have, in your list of things that you're working on and items that are coming forward to us, is there a discussion about how we might change these bylaws that are coming, or do you feel like we're in a fairly stable place? So part of me, and the reason I'm asking is, um, some, um, should we just continue to act according to past practice and know that we're going to come forward and revisit the bylaw in, the, in some near future? Or is there, this isn't particularly on your queue, and we should just bite the bullet and start acting with the new rules now? I think unfortunately it's particularly in the queue. Um, we've been working on with different town uh, authorities and trying to help develop a more robust special permanent process for this type of temporary signage. Yeah. But it's really not something that the board should be necessarily granting some sort of authority mm -hmm. that's not conferred upon the board explicitly. So who would be the appoint who would be the authority that would do that permitting? So the zoning uh, the zoning basically boards would be responsible for uh, hearing a special permit application with regards to temporary signage. Wow. So signage is covered under zoning bylaws right now. There's been discussion within town government about whether or not there can at some point be a movement towards moving signage out of zoning bylaws. But that's quite an undertaking. And so I don't want to make any false promises that that issue will be resolved soon because that would require a vote at town meeting. But I can't instruct the board to assume an authority that it doesn't really have over the zoning piece of it is the best way I can articulate it. Yes. Mr. Caro, I'm not going to be able to support your motion. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling, with that, dis that explanation, I'm feeling uncomfortable myself and I'm going to withdraw it. Um, we have to fix this, though. We, we have to fix this. This is one of the most frequent questions that I get from people is, is about signs, promotional signs. Mm. Can I do this? Can't I do this? And so much of it, it doesn't fall under the, the board. Um, I do know that we, we have let some slip in the past through, and, and uh, that was probably a mistake. Um, so yeah. Unfortunately, I think we're not going to be able to take action on this. So, so I um, I, I really think that this is a uh, it's a pertinent time to have discussion with the master plan coming up. I know that through CDBG we did just um, allocate some money to rewrite the zoning uh, regulations and pulling um, signage out of that would be probably be well worth the effort um, when that comes up. So I'm sure we can discuss it at that time. Um, but until then, we're, I guess our hands are kind of tied. So I'm really sorry, and I wish we could help out a little more. Um, but please enjoy your free parking from <laughs> In the fish car. Yeah, in the fish car. Two out of three. But thank you very much, and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so. That being said. Well, did they? Did you want to look, give them a chance to just oh, yeah. to pitch the actual want, times and when? Do you want a promotion? Pitch, 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 pitch the actual. Okay. We have thousands watching. Yeah. Okay. Well, with thousands watching. I'm not going to miss this opportunity. Uh, Wednesday, October the 15th, at the Regent Theater is opening night, and we'll be showing Bozo, the teacher from Tivoli. Uh, it's a gentleman that was. Uh, well, he moved here from the Republic of Georgia after his father had been executed uh, under the Stalin regime. And he's a very talented man. He's become um, a, a great teacher, a musical teacher, uh, to many very well-known uh, musicians. He's also a sculptor 
and um, a philosopher. He's an amazing man. We're having the, uh, the producer and writer, the editor, as well as the director with us that night, and we will be going to Mononymy Grill uh, <coughs> for the after party. Thursday night, it will, you know, I, I would suggest that anyone that really wants to see the entire program uh, go to the Regent website and, um, and look at the program and purchase tickets, and festival passes are available for $65. So thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Good luck. Moving on, um, correspondence receive. Uh, we have a stop sign um, at Prospect and Hillside Avenues from Richard Turcott and Howard Muse, the uh, co-chairs of TAC. We have a request for a four-way stop at Gray in Oakland. Um, we have... Um, the letter uh, regarding the American Legion. Um, we have a letter regarding traffic around the Thompson School and also um, regarding a dangerous intersection um, at Henderson Street and Route 16. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I, we have a motion and um, I know second. that in a second I know that there are people that are you know, I've been waiting with bated breath, and I appreciate you hanging with us. Um, one, and I'll be call you up right in two seconds. Did you have something to say, Dan? Please keep going. Oh, right, yeah. Go. I want to. Oh, uh, so do you want to? Did you have a particular order that you wanted to tackle these? Um, you know, I th I think that it would be best to give our audience an opportunity yep. to speak, and okay. then we'll talk about it after. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Please. Um, Come forward, whoever wants to go first. And uh, if you could just introduce yourself. And I, I, I would also appreciate, um, uh, you know, not being repetitive as to the person right in front of you. Sure. But please, Thanks. go forward. I'm Dana Skolny from 12 Pond. And I would like, well, this is the first introduction you've heard of the issues there. Mm -hmm. So thank you for taking our questions. Um, I would like the meeting minutes to request that there are 10 of us here. Uh, which underscores the importance of the issues, we think. Um, Vera did a wonderful job describing the damage that's been done, but I do want to state that the noise is a real problem, that it, um, we can hear entire conversations, and it does prevent people from sleeping. So, hey. Thank you. Um, I, I actually have a question, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, how re is this very recent, or you know, how long has this been ongoing? I think we've been tolerating it for a long time. Okay. It's just, it's just come to a point that we need to do something. Okay. Thank you. Um, next. So I'm Demetra Barlis, a resident at Twelve Pond Lane, and I've been living there for eight years now and been a, a fortunate victim of all the noise that's been taking place there. My balcony is overlooking the American Legion, and it's a constant issue with drunk people outside fighting, shouting, two o'clock in the morning, beeping their cars. I have to sleep with earplugs. I've gotten ear infections because of the earplugs that I constantly have to keep in my ear. And even with the windows closed and a noise machine and all of the everything that you could possibly imagine that you try to do, you still get woken up. And it's very, very disturbing. I mean, they have lawn chairs outside smoking and drinking, and there's nothing that's been done about it. So it's unbearable at this point, and I love the Arlington community. I'm a Girl Scout leader here. I absolutely love living in Arlington, but living on 12 Pond Lane is a nightmare. It really is. There's just, it never gets better, no matter how many times we complain. So we really need your assistance here. So we really would request that you <coughs> support us in this to have the noise issue addressed along with all the other items that we've been dealing. It's just completely unbearable at this point. So I've started looking to move outside of the area because of this issue. I have a mortgage, I pay taxes, and I just, I can't even sleep in my own bedroom anymore. It's just really unbearable. So thank you. Thank you very much. Is anyone else here to discuss the, this item? Well, I'm um, seeing none. Um, being that it is, you know, not an agenda item, um, you know, we haven't really had the appropriate amount of time to really delve into this. 
at this point. So I'm sorry that you know we kept you waiting. If you're hoping to you know really get a response tonight um, on what we can do to take action against it, because I don't think we're or in my opinion, we're not ready to offer one. Um, there's quite some work that will be have to done, but I do appreciate you bringing it to our attention. Um, it's, uh, if, you know, Dan? I was just thinking, so uh, I'd like us to figure out who, uh, who the right person or people is to try to get a, I mean, obviously the first thing to do is to talk some, see what dialogue we can get to improve it. I'm not sure who the right person is. Is it a member of our board? Is it a, um, a designee of the town manager? Or is there, because, and I also, I think of this as at least, to me, there's two different chunks of this that I can think of. One is the drainage and the issue, and frankly, I know the least about that stuff. In terms of the liquor license, if the behavior of patrons is causing problems, then that is something that would be coming under our jurisdiction yeah. that would be appropriate for us. I mean, that one for me is clearly appropriate for us to be looking into. But of course, with all these things, my first step was, you know, I want to have a conversation and see what we learn mm -hmm. before we go with that. Uh, I don't have a specific recommendation, but I, I like that general direction. Okay. Yes, Ms. Mahan. Um, would it be appropriate if, through the chair, we refer this to the town manager? Because I anticipate, I, I'm thinking of three, possibly four department heads um, that I would look to for information and recourse, as well as mm -hmm. town council. Would that be appropriate, Adam? I, I think that's right on the money. Right off the bat, I think in terms of the noise, I'd want to talk to the police chief to see what we could do. In terms of the flood issues, it sounds like it's a private property issue, but I think we could talk to engineering that could, so they could take a look and see if there is any help that could be uh, granted or if there's any bylaws that are already in place that could help out. So if you refer it to me, I will take action immediately and then report back to the board on what can be done. So I make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second, and that sounds good to me. And I, I would just I recommend all correspondents will go through their attorney who is here tonight. Yeah, I think that sounds fair. Okay. Thank you. So with the motion and a second, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none. Thank you very much for uh, bringing this here tonight. Yes. And Fran, could you please, through the chair, make sure that the American Legion gets all the correspondence on this issue? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, for the other items under correspondence received, um, happy to take recommendations. Could I? Uh, yes. I, I want to make mention on, on one on the, the four-way stop at Gray and Oakland Ave. That intersection is the, the recent uh, beneficiary of a complete redesign with some work still to be done. I know TAC put a lot of effort into studying that intersection as well as the engineering division. Uh, and spoke with Mike Rademacher just to check today. There's still some final uh, crosswalks to be painted and some signage pointing out to where those crosswalks are to be installed. Uh, but at no point in any of that analysis was a four-way stop part of any proposal. So I, I, I would urge no further reference be done uh, okay. in that regard. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, and I would like to thank you for your correspondence regarding Henderson and Route 16 as well. I think Ms. Tallon is here as well oh. uh, for that. Are, are you here to... Yes, are you, you're, are you, would you like to discuss this item? Yeah, I can't be here in this room without help, so. I'm sorry. <coughs> yes, yes, please, yes. come forward. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Hi. I, I'm Cynthia Tolan, 50 Fairmont Street, Arlington. I've been in town for over 30 years. Um, I wrote an email to the Board of Selectmen, and first I want to say thank you to Adam for very quick action on clearing out some debris of uh, weeds and uh, trees that were blocking the Meridian Strip at Mass Ave and Route 16. Adam got on that very, very quickly. I noticed I got in touch with him, I think the middle of last week. Sounds right. And Saturday morning at, when I went out, I could see that this area had been cleared. So I want to say thank you very much for taking care of that so quickly. Um, I'm very concerned about an intersection at Henderson Street that uh, goes into Mass Ave. It goes into Route 16. Henderson Street is one of the last uh, streets in East Arlington. It comes off of Mass Ave and goes over a little brook, the Alwife Brook, and heads into Route 16, which is Alwife Brook Parkway. I was nearly killed about a week ago because I, you have no 
ability to see the oncoming traffic and the photographs that I took and that you're looking at now show you that there are three barriers to being able to see the oncoming traffic. If you're on Henderson Street in your car and you look left towards Medford, there is a huge concrete pillar uh, that probably is an old pillar. There are some somewhat horizontal slats in a uh, fence that takes you into the bikeway. And there's vegetation that was planted behind the slats. So you have <coughs> no way to see the traffic coming at you until you go into the intersection. And I had inched into the intersection last week trying to clear that area and a car barreled broadside within inches of me and I, I, that would have been a fatality for me for sure and possibly for the other driver. This is a terrible situation and this is why I was, I, I had mentioned it to the Arlington police I think over the summer and of course not, nothing happened. So when that near accident happened, I felt I had to do something immediately, which is why I wrote to you and I, why I went to Adam's office and wrote to him. And uh, I had also mentioned this uh, lack of visibility at Mass Ave at Route 16, and Adam did take care of that. If you go down and you see that, you'll see that uh, the, the median strip has been cut back. So you, there again, you could not see the traffic coming in from Somerville. If you can imagine Route 16 is these two lanes, and this is Henderson Street. The way it's configured now, you have to cross, you have to go into the intersection, you have to cross traffic going this way, and then cross over into traffic going the other way. It makes no sense. It's not rocket science, it's common sense. That road should be First, I'd like you to keep the road open because it's like a pressure valve that takes some pressure off of Mass Avenue Route 16. It's very close to that, and it eases some of that. But the way it is now, you have to go into an oncoming traffic lane from the left and then cross over one on the right. And you can't see the way it is now unless you come out into the road. It's extremely dangerous. And my concern is that, is anybody monitoring these things? I mean, is anybody paying attention? Because this is really dangerous. The way it would work best would be if you're coming from Medford and you're going west on Route 16 towards our White Brook to turn right over the bridge because you're not having to cross two lanes of traffic to do that. The way you have it now is you're, you're coming into the intersection you can't see the oncoming traffic, and you have to cross that lane of the oncoming traffic, and then you have to cross another lane of traffic going the other way. It's just absurd. And a light was put in, and a light means nothing if you have no visibility. So I urge you to go out and look at it yourself and see what I'm talking about. Yeah, you have the photographs? Yes, we looked at them. Thank you very much for bringing those. Yeah, and I think Adam said that this was uh, Mass Dot that was responsible yeah, for um, that. Yeah, maybe we'll let Adam respond. So, do you want to tell Thank us what you and, Yeah, so it's kind of an interesting area. So the, the Arlington line is right at the brook. So the bridge that uh, Ms. Tolan is describing, the bridge belongs to Mass DOT. The actual intersection is in Somerville. And the area with the boards that you saw in the shrubbery is DCR's uh, Department of Conservation and Recreation as part of the new Alewife Greenway. Um, I, I actually happened to be on, in that exact intersection two weeks ago. Uh, myself and chairman of the Finance Committee were going to an event together, and he lives down in that neighborhood, so I picked him up. And we, we did just that and experienced the, the same sort of difficulty. I, I will say I'm, I'm concerned that raising attention to this. It needs attention, but I'm concerned that raising the attention will lead to a recommendation that it be closed. Because I'm not sure, I'm not sure how it's solved. Well, that, that's, my, that's my non-engineering no. uh, statement. Well, so I think that um, perhaps it seems like you, we've, we can take some steps to bring it up to DOT and see what they can do. Yes. And, and perhaps if we forward this to you, you can look into that? Yeah, I've already forwarded it to DCR and DOT. And the next thing I, I want to do is talk to the 
traffic folks in Somerville yeah. and see what they can do. Uh, that well, I that think sounds great. At, at any rate, the way it is now, it's just a death trap. It's somebody's going to get killed. Yeah, there. no, we, we certainly so understand really that. It really is not viable the way it is, but you also need to get whoever's responsible for that vegetation and that fence. And it's, if you look at the photographs, you can mm. see it's, it's, it's visual litter that you're looking at. If you're trying to look, you're seeing horizontal slats, you're seeing vegetation, you're seeing a big uh, concrete <coughs> barrier. Well, you, you just can't see any. We, we will, um, we, we certainly way. understand um, what you're saying and we'll do everything we can to you know, make that area safer. And I'm very grateful that you brought this to our attention. I, I hope that you can do something about it. I, I think going right on that road, if you're coming mm -hmm. from Medford and going right over the bridge instead of the other way, might work. Okay. I don't well, know how the rest of this on no. that street feel, but the way it is now, it's not working. It, it's something's got to happen. Well, thank, thank you. you very much for coming tonight. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you. So we have um, the intersection at Henderson and Route 16. Um, Adam's already taken care of it, so we're we're good with that. Um, any yes? So I would move receipt on the stop sign in Prospect and Hillside. Move receipt on the four-way stop at Gray Street and open, with the understanding that it's already gotten a lot of tech attention recently. And move receipt on the dangerous intersection because the town manager is already on it. Yes. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. I think that still leaves the Thompson school traffic one. Oh, yes. I am. Um, so I was reading this, and I was thinking that I don't want to send it to TAC right yet. I'd like to think about it for a little while, um, so if that's OK. I was not going to say, I completely agree. Uh, so I was actually going to also send this one because to me, when I read that one particular one, in particular where it talks about uh, right of way and stuff like that, that to me seemed like perhaps there was an enforcement um, response that was appropriate. And I was going to suggest that we send that to Adam either. And if it turns out that enforcement is not the appropriate response, then he can come back and tell us, you know, otherwise. That works for me. It's fine. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, new business. Fran, do you have any new business? No, I do not. Thank you for joining us tonight. <laughs> Doug. Uh, no new business. Adam. Uh, the only piece of new business I have, I know the board is already aware of this, but I just wanted to uh, publicly announce that we're losing uh, a really excellent department head in Ryan Livergood. Uh, he's relocating with his family to take a job at the Warren Newport Library District in Illinois. Uh, he's really only been here a short time, but anybody who's had a chance to meet him and work with him knows that he is just, he's top notch, excellent, does a great job for the library and a great job for Arlington, so very, very sad to see him go. He'll, he'll be here about the next month helping with the transition, but um, big loss, but wish him well in his future endeavors. That's all. Thank you. I'll tell you. Um, just in the interest of time, and I believe this is going to be on a future agenda. I don't know if the town manager could give us just a quick four or five sentence or whatever you feel appropriate um, regarding the cemetery. I know the chairman and uh, the town manager have been working on the issues raised at town meeting as well as the infrastructure. And I, I, where it's going to be on a future agenda, I'm not looking for anything in depth. Okay, no, that, that's fine. So uh, you're absolutely right. Cemetery parking and infrastructure <coughs> is a big discussion of town meeting. So. Uh, Chairman Byrne and I talked about it uh, several weeks ago with a goal of getting it on um, the uh, second meeting in October's agenda. Uh, I met with DPW Director Mike Kronemacher and the police chief last week. We are going to start doing some of the traffic counts we talked about at town meeting to determine the best place to try to impact cut through traffic in the cemetery. <laughs> and we also plan on having um, some uh, recommendations in terms of parking to bring to the board at that October meeting. In terms of the infrastructure, the water system, water system improvements are under, uh, underway right now. There is a $230,000 capital appropriation in this year's budget for roadway improvements. Uh, but to achieve the full scale of the improvements we talked about at town meeting, we need some additional funding in the FY16 budget. That's built into the capital request right now. Should that be approved in the spring, uh, we'll roll out uh, something in the spring to undertake a large roadway and sort of surface improvement in the cemetery. So we, we are moving forward on a number of the items we talked about. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dunn. 
Uh, I just want to say that this has been a really good agenda with a lot of uh, forward progress uh, being driven by the town manager's office, and I really want to thank you very much for the stuff that's here. Welcome. Thank you. Amen. Joe? No new business. Um, nor do I. Do we, do we have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you very much, everyone.